Ruby Rose leaves Batwoman, Nintendo's bad leaks, and the Snyder Cut is real? Oh, yeah, apparently Justin. it is real. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to nope, this week's episode. All of this and more tonight on Super Geeks. <laughs> all of this and more uh, on Super Geeks. Way to go, um, man. You ruined it. <laughs> I know it. I well, know we'll make it. up for it in the rest of the show. So welcome to this week's uh, episode. Uh, the uh, s release, the Snyder Cut edition. Uh, and that is the story at the top of our discussion uh, list this week. Um, as it's become something uh, of an official thing now, the Snyder Cut. Um, and it was announced actually by Zack Snyder himself on, uh, while well, he was doing a watch party of um, Man of Steel and with, you know, fans from all over the, from all over the world. And he announced that, yes, it was going to be an actual thing. And uh, and then Warner Brothers followed up with uh, an announcement um, talking about what actually it was all going to entail, which included, by the way, the uh, fact that the Snyder Cut is not actually a thing. Uh, they're actually spending probably about thirty million dollars to uh, to take original fo unused footage, uh, reshoot some things, uh, do new dialogue with some of the actors coming back and everything to, and then piece it together into the story that uh, Zack Snyder originally wanted to tell. So it's more like the Snyder story rather than the Snyder cut because it still doesn't exist. Um, but uh, Warner Brothers has announced this and that uh, it is intended to be released in 2021 on HBO Max, which launches this coming week. So, uh, So how do we feel about the sort of Snyder cut <laughs> actually becoming a thing. Jason? Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see it. I, I still haven't seen the original Justice League. Um, you know, the Dawn of Justice kind of gave me a bad taste in all the drop behind the scenes drama. I think the only part I've seen was the scene, the really kind of infamous scene with, um, um, what's his name? Superman. <laughs> Whatever, whoever plays him. like Henry Cavill. Not, Henry Cavill. Like they digitally removed his mustache and it looks like he's got like a plastic it, lip. Yeah, it's like he's like didn't shave right or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, you know, I mean, I'm I'm ready for suit. I'm ready, you know, all of this DCEU has just made me appreciate even Brandon Routh's take on Superman. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I actually thought Brandon Routh's take on it was yeah. great. He just didn't have a script that uh Right, that, and we that saw what he could do in the role in um, Crisis, yeah, over in Crisis. So, so uh, other opinions, son? Do you have an opinion, or is this one you don't care about? I honestly, I, I don't care. I don't care. I, I've not, I've not seen a a DC superhero movie since the uh, the Heath Ledger Joker Batman. And and then that's twenty years now, you know. It's like I'm, it's I don't or right. Like 10 years. This it's, I mean, this is that's like that's years ago now, and it's like I really I just I don't care. I'm I've been this burnt out on superhero movies. Aside I've from been... aside from Wonder Woman, that's the last good DC movie, anyway. Oh, Aquaman was good. Aquaman is good. Aquaman was very good. I, like and the, I, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm. I, I heard that the the Birds of Prey movie was pretty good, despite the the box office returns. Yeah, I actually haven't seen Birds um, of Prey yet, so I can't comment on it. But um, you know, it um, got kind uh, of. Caught. Shazam was excellent. Shazam was fantastic. Oh, Shazam was good. Shazam was I good. I loved Shazam. Yeah. So you know, there's hope there. Once they stop trying to tie each movie together in a, a universe, it's been working out well. You know, it's funny how that uh, actually parallels the way the two comic universes um, uh, developed. M Marvel was always sort of interconnected, and DC started out very, uh, you know, each superhero in, in his or her own world. And it was only once they were in quite a while before they started bringing them together in the Justice Society and the Justice League. So, and even then, 
that would be the only place you'd see them together. You wouldn't necessarily see them together other than Batman and Superman because they did have a series together. But anyway, so it's interesting that um, that the movies, movies universes are, are developing similarly. Um, so how many, uh, is, is anyone looking forward to a Snyder Cut, Travis? Five words. I don't give a fuck. Okay, so um, you and Son oh. are in that, are in that neck. Uh, Ross, know, how I'm, about you? Uh, I, I don't know if it's it's serendipity or not, but I was watching the Harley Quinn animated series, and their cold open on the last episode was a couple haters sitting on a couch in a basement bitching about the show, and one of them was wearing a release the Snyder Cut TV shirts. T- That's hilarious. T-shirts. And the other one was wearing a shirt that said, uh, Last Jedi is not canon. <laughs> I I love that. It, I mean, that's that. Yeah, Harley Quinn is actually a fun show to watch. So if you all get a chance, watch it. It's freaking fantastic. As for the Snyder Cut itself, I'm pretty ambivalent. When it's out, I'll watch it, but I, I don't feel any specific hype for it. It's there. I I, I read the synopsis. It's an inter- It's it's an interesting story. I like in the Injustice universe. Uh, I like takes that turn heroes into villains and and villains into heroes. So I'm 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 curious to see how it turns out, but I'm not uh, I'm not a, overly excited for it. I guess and Justin, where do you stand? Um, actually, you know what? I'm kind of wait going to wait and see. You know, it's uh. I wasn't too thrilled with the Justice League movie. I will just, I'll give it a chance. You know, I really don't care either way. It wasn't something I was really caring about. I mean, it can't make it that much better. But then again, you know, I could be, could be wrong. I'll give it a chance to what happens. Well, I'll certainly give it a chance. But um, I have always been of the opinion that Zack Snyder's take on the DC universe was unnecessarily grim at a time when uh, grim was falling out of fashion and, you know, it worked with Batman, but by the time Superman came around, I mean, I, Superman, you know, Man of Steel, I feel like was just such a depressing movie and, and you didn't get any sense of the real sort of heroic role that Superman has always played in, you know, in our culture's mythology. And, um, I just found it really dark. I didn't think that his take on the Justice League was going to be any lighter. Um, you know, I mean, Justice League, the movie suffered from, uh, you know, certainly too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, because Joss Whedon, of course, brings an entirely different sensibility than Zack mm-hmm. Snyder uh, would have, uh, you know, did bring and would have brought if it, if it had remained his project. But, um, but I'm still not convinced that his vision was the best one for, that franchise based on what I'd seen in, in uh, Man of Steel. So, uh, so I've never been a big release the Snyder Cut kind of proponent. Uh, I'll certainly watch it um, at some point because I, you know, I, I'm curious to see what, uh, you know, what he might have done. Um, but at the same time, it's like if I were Warner Brothers, is this something I would really spend $30 million on? Um, to to complete his his vision because it really doesn't exist as a as a cut, um, and in fact, um, it you know it it could backfire in in a number of ways for uh, for Warner Brothers. Um, uh, CBR.com ran a uh, an article this week in which it said the Snyder Cut decision may be teaching fans the wrong lesson, um, and that. Uh, essentially by giving in to, uh, you know, this very loud sort of toxic group of, of fans, they may be sending the signal that that kind of approach uh, will will work. And given where I, I know we all stand or most of us stand on toxic fandom, um, I, I tend to agree that, um, that what's happening here may not... Um, may not be a wise decision because we don't really but have you, a sense you can't really you can't really say that that's unique to just this situation we've seen time and time again that toxic outrage over anything will have a studio or a company turn around and bend over for something Oh, what, oh, yeah, but, has but that thirty million, million dollars worth of something son I don't oh, think so we're getting a we're getting a pike show 
I mean, you know, well, that's different. That's not toxic. that's very different. No, that's uh, yeah, that, yeah, I would no, not people. equate those two in but, any way. But but, but we've but, Jason then yeah. back to Sun. But we've gotten other fan cut or director cuts before. You know, whether it's a you know a, a minor retake or minor re, re you know whether it's like the Wrath of Khan with Nicholas Meyer or even something as drastic as the Donner cut of Superman two. We've gotten these before, and a lot of times think- those are actual cuts. Those are things that existed. You know, when when you make a film, the director delivers his no, or so her the, cut to the a studio. Cut, the Donner cut didn't exist. The Donner cut was created specifically for that release. They had to go back and use footage that was um, that was not intended for production use um, to fulfill that. Like so, like the scene where Lois shoots Superman in the hotel in a. You know that 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 was very you know that was part of their screen tests for Superman for the Superman movie itself that they had to leverage to that so they they there is I think um, history of them of, of especially Warner Brothers doing that where they think there's value to be had had uh, sure but that's re-editing existing footage um, that that's not what this is this is thirty million dollars of additional production um, and. You know, and some of it is existing footage. I mean, I don't want to say it's not completely what you're what you're talking about, but but I don't think that Warner Brothers spent thirty million dollars on the Donner cut, um, and so that's that's the difference between this and other sort of director director's cut movies that you've seen, whether it's Blade Runner or Wrath of Khan or you know even uh, Star Trek the Motion Picture. Um, you know, those are those are extended versions of of uh, the existing film. This, in, in oh my many God, ways, who is... wants to watch an extended cut of shit porn? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at it this way: if, if anything, this is some good marketing for HBO Max, since this is being made. And specifically I think that for may be HBO part Max. of what. Yeah, th- I think they're that capitalizing be... off of the biggest meme in their property because that's what the Snyder Cut has become ever since Joss Whedon took over and released the movie and news circulated that he had a different vision for it. Suddenly on every single bit of Warner Brothers released content, whether it's related to DC or not, somebody or a legion of somebody's posts release the Snyder Cut. So you've got all of the, you've got that idea that's out there and now they're, they're capitalizing on that. So at least from a marketing standpoint, this could be a good move. Well, we'll see. I think when we see the subscription numbers for HBO Max, once that once that happens, um, and that's our our question of the week, by the way, is we're going to be talking about HBO Max in just a minute. Um, but uh, also, I mean, it'll come down to what they expect out of those thirty million dollars. They're obviously not releasing it theatrically. Uh, I think if they did, it would be a flop. Um, so it's a very strategic decision to put it on HBO Max, and and I think you're right to to uh, leverage the 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 meme around it and and the interest in it, and see if that wins them more subscriptions and whether those subscribers actually stick with it, um, because it's still a year away, and of course HBO Max is is launching next week, so um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll we'll certainly track it, but I'm I'm. Uh, I'm not sure it's everything people think it's going to be uh, cracked up to be. So look, there are two superheroes I am excited to see: the Wonder Twins, form of <laughs> a pair of wings and the shape of getting the fuck out of the movie making business. <laughs> <laughs> I can't disagree with you on that one. Uh, <laughs> I I can't help but think of the Bat Radio episode with the Wonder Twins when I think of those two. What, oh, was that something George did? Yes, yes Wonder Twincest. Oh, oh my God! And that's all you need that's, to know about what's that's that's all you need to know. About. May you rest in peace, George. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so let's go to the question of the week. And the question of the week this week is around HBO Max, which launches on May twenty seventh, <laughs> and um, uh, it's launching. Well, it's not launching with uh, the Snyder Cut, but that's coming in twenty twenty one. It's bringing together everything that Warner Brothers has, HBO has, and all of its very various flavors between HBO on cable, HBO Now, HBO Go, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, you know, they're bringing a lot of the Warner Brothers uh, licensed properties back under the fold, like Friends. Um, and uh, we've been, they've 
been teasing this for a year. It's finally about to happen. How many of you plan on checking out HBO Max? Eventually. I'm kind of broke right now, so I can't afford any more streaming services. Mm -hmm. But among the the, H, the AT and T Warner Brothers properties, Rooster Teeth is one of them, and so I'm interested to see what they release for that platform. Do you know if Rooster Teeth is confirmed to have anything at launch? Yeah, uh, I don't know about at launch, but they are constantly constantly releasing content for YouTube and their own their own website, their own streaming service. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they had something at launch. Okay. Uh, anyone else planning on subscribing to I'm pretty YouTube? sure Sean has a subscription already. Yeah, Sean does. I know I will eventually, but I got to recover from my mid first. So once you do that, <laughs> I'll get yeah, we dropped <laughs> We dropped Sling in favor for HBO Max. So I subscribed to oh, HBO really? Now last week, which, uh, with, you know, with the pre-deal. Pre so... Yeah, so then that's going to be on what that's driving my what's my watching this week. Was... You know, Machete is going to be very mad. Oh, Genlock Season 2 is going to be on HBO Max. That's it's that's their mech-based act, uh, animated action adventure series. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all of the new Doctor Who is supposed to be on HBO Max too, isn't it? Uh, yes, they're going to be bringing that because uh, right now it's on um, Amazon, right? No, it's not on Am Amazon right now. They took it off there. It's no longer on Prime. Oh really? Yeah. I guess I, I can I can uh I can uh, confirm that claim. I have a friend in the admin circle. Um, she uh, has commented before about her frustrations with Prime and how Doctor Who will one day be available, and then the next day just be gone. Um, I guess. Oh, the, 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 the thing with Prime is they don't put all the episodes they only even have them in order half the time i've noticed this with a few of the uh shows like the new uh thunderbirds they're missing half the episodes uh for see some of the seasons they only had shows so i don't know if that's all they had to write to or what what the deal is but so and yeah, they don't fire have flying entire before. tv shows huh <laughs> well they only have some of the episodes of star trek in the right order so it, it, it's yeah, I I don't know if that's just their something that they did or you know something they had to do it in a certain way or what the deal is. But yeah, Amazon. Yeah, I don't, I don't exclusively watch it. I'll watch it for the Voice and the Expanse when it comes out. But other than that, oh, there's plenty to watch on 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 Prime. I I, I don't have any complaints. Mm -hmm. I waited a long time before I signed up for Prime, and I haven't regretted it. You know, they've done some, they've done some really innovative stuff. Um, Homecoming second season uh, drops this week. Um, I love the first season of it with Julia Roberts. She's not returning, but um, but if they have the same sort of storytelling sensibility, I'm certainly all for it. Um, they've had some great well, series. Like the Boys is on it. Um, what was that? What was that one that we watched? Uh, the one that was sort of set in Victorian times. Um, with oh 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 oh, oh what was it called carnival was. not carnival um ah, i'm blanking oh, on it too carnival? george Damn what? It. do you remember ross what was that oh i, th I thought you were starting to say something no i'm uh, uh, sorry <laughs> anyway it's uh i'll look it up but um please do but george been... loved that that uh that series and it's it's renewed for a second second season so uh so i think Mr. there's uh no no it wasn't uh, Mr. Robot, was it? No, that was on USA. Um, although I think um, I think the reruns are carried on on Prime, but it was it was originally produced on for USA Network. Upload was good, and that's you know, upload. Prime, yeah, I've seen. Uh, I've only watched one more episode uh, since we last talked, but um, but it's it's uh, it's interesting. It's good. I, I'm I'm liking um, it. The mention of that network has me wondering something. I gotta look it up. Okay, while you do that, is there anyone else that I didn't check? Well, Travis, I haven't asked you. Are you planning on checking out HBO Max? Um, not right away. Um, I don't really feel an obligation to right now. Um, my sister would probably tell me to get it, watch Game of Thrones and other fun stuff. But, I mean, it's just like 
right away. I, I don't even know too much of what will be available. Actually, uh, I'm going to tell you some of the stuff that's available in just a second. So maybe you can, you. Hold on. you can revise, uh, revise your opinion. Um, the, um, <laughs> I called it. What's that? So your mention of, uh, the USA network, um, uh, it just um, made me wonder, it was like, you know what, show I haven't thought about in a while? I haven't thought about Treadstone in a while. And so I- Oh my up. God, you're so obsessed <laughs> with that show. <laughs> you're just, no. Oh, oh, Travis. No, no. I am pleased you to announce that Treadstone has been canceled. Oh, oh, you must oh. be so bummed because you have now have nothing to complain about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got five uh, enjoy in this universe. Oh, yeah. don't go rot in a dumpster. That was a terrible <laughs> I It's done. Yeah. It's done. I'm happy. <laughs> like, just so, like, I shouldn't yeah, be happy yeah, about yeah. a show getting canceled because I know a lot of people. You, you invested a lot of time into your hatred of that show, Travis. Yeah. Well, sure. well, <laughs> it, it was well founded. Well, it it just... was well founded. You you wrote very uh, coherent, cohesive, uh, you know, <coughs> disintegrated that show bit by bit, uh, uh, week Iran. after week. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, the show you love to hate. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, finally, oh, Sean no. P. O'Halloran. Hooray. He's got his barbecued ribs. <laughs> Always wrong enough for the Is group. sticking to your ribs, Sean? And most importantly, are you wearing pants? I am, only because I didn't have time to take them off tonight. Okay, well, I'm glad, you know, you prioritized ahead of your pants. I did. I, I got to be fed. I got burgers and everybody, and we're going to go. Excellent, uh, excellent. So well, we were just talking about HBO Max and the Snyder Cut, Sean. So uh, quick, oh, you want to give us I your, came at your the hot best take? Time. You did. So first start yeah. out with Snyder Cut, which they now said is going to be a thing, $30 million to, to make it. Um, and it's coming to HBO Max in uh, 2021. What's your hot take? Okay, so my hot take is this, is that, um, how do I put this? I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh my God, you're just like son. You are just like son. <laughs> I mean, I gotta be honest, I think, I don't think there's. So, how do you polish a turd? I'm not sure what why everybody thinks that Zack Snyder's his his vision on this is going to be any better than what we've already seen. I think people I mean, forget how much they hated Zack Snyder's vision after Man of Steel. You right. know, right? I mean, I, and yeah, you I know, didn't... what's next? Are, are we going to get Breakfast Club kind of Fantastic Four too? Ooh, oh, that's going to no, be outstanding. that's, that's never going to happen. That. Jason, you were going to jump in with something? I was going to say, like, I don't think Man of Steel was a bad movie. I mean, I actually enjoyed it. What, what there were killed? things to enjoy about it. Yeah, uh, you know, okay. I, I, my problem with, with it was more philosophical, which is Superman was not a hero really in that movie. And no, it was, but it was an origin story and it was a different take on the Superman yeah. origin story. The it problem was one the in which he explicitly is, tried to not be a hero, which I think well, messes with the essence of what this character is. But the, yeah, but the problem is, is that like, like we got that story. And so for that story to have value, we needed to see a follow up worthy of of that origin story and we didn't get that we got we, we jumped right into batman versus superman which right. was you know mm -hmm. and so like like i think the first movie would have been really good if we came out with a good man of steel sequel where he was the hero and he was i, I totally agree <clears throat> we didn't get but that. i don't think Zack snyder had that in him he wanted to make that kind of tone in his superhero movie right. I, and, I, and, about, and, about, I want to be honest about man of steel the first 30 minutes i was like this isn't bad. Yeah, I, me too. I'm enjoying this. And then, then he just went and fucking Michael Bane the shit out of it. And guess what? What, what is going on here? So, uh, destroying oh, look, cities look. was all the rage in Hollywood at the time. It, it really was. It really was. I, all I could think of was like there was someone who actually went through and they they did like a a, a really legitimate estimate of how many people died in right. the battle I've between seen that. him and, 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 the, and, and, the and it was like a huge amount right it's and like it's directors fun. were trying to one up each other what are the one that really stuck in my mind was the the gi joe sequel where they destroyed london for no real reason at right. all and yeah, then godzilla came out and just one up to everybody 
Well, <laughs> yeah, but you know, you expect that from Godzilla. Like, you know, that's I, I expected whole one point. city to get wrecked, not uh, twelve. <laughs> well, why not? I, I would, I would like to interject here for just a minute. I misheard Sean, and that is uh, my mishearing. <laughs> Sean is. I would legit sit down and watch a Breakfast Club cut of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, I would no. too. I agree with you on that one as well, son. They'd be in quarantine <laughs> after their little extra dimensional excursion yeah, and stay there <laughs> for the whole movie. So, uh so that brings us then to uh the the question of the week which was do you plan on subscribing to HBO Max, Sean. I don't have any choice. I'm already an HBO subscriber. I'm getting it no matter what. So. Well, that's not actually true. <laughs> uh, I've done a lot of research on that. Um, so if you're an HBO subscriber through your cable system, chances are you will get oh, HBO Max yeah, direct, as well. I, I, Ex right. Unless you happen to be a Comcast subscriber, which of course I am. That makes no sense to me Comcast sure and, and HBO oh, yes, have not come, it, have right, not come to an agreement. The, Makes total sense. I completely forgot. That's because okay. Comcast doesn't give anything with a Comcast jar of Vaseline. Right. Yeah, I it's, have, it's I, true. Go ahead. Yeah, I looked at. I'm Direct TV. I'm good to go. I'm covered. Yeah, you're yeah. good because that's a, that's owned by AT and T. Right. Um, and so my only so I have HBO Go and HBO on cable, and so I look at what HBO Max is offering and have to wonder, okay, is this worth fourteen dollars? Well, it turns out that for an extra ten dollars a month. By uh by upgrading my uh AT and T wireless account to their Elite's Platinum Unlimited plan instead of the what's the one I have now, which is the other oh, unlimited yeah. <laughs> plan. Right, right. Um. So it's ten ten dollars more a month. So for ten dollars more a month, I get even more data, yeah. even though it's still unlimited, and and HBO Max. Uh, so more, that's so I have to ask myself: Is there ten dollars worth of value uh, right. there for me? Yeah. Yeah. Here, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you a funny story about it. this. Is what H what what Directv since they bought uh, AT and T bought Directv what they've been doing. AT and T has a very interesting marketing strategy, and I found this out when we moved to the new house. And I had to move my Directv service over to the new house, and here's what they do. I did this. This happened on Black Friday weekend, by the way, when I when I moved the service over. And here's what they do. They give me the new setup. They bring the guy over here, do the new installation and everything. And then what happens is a nice young lady from the AT&T store comes by to sell you AT&T wireless service, okay? Now, I'm already a customer of AT&T wireless as well. I got a really good package be between subscribing That's to direct That's what she TV said. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! This on this show. Yeah. Only on so, this so let, let me you want to hear this is the amazing part of this how how they're they're getting everyone to combine their services i already have their service mind you but they had a black friday deal going on they want to let me in on it basically what happened is i was able to add an extra line of service to the account get a free iphone xr out of the deal as well and it was going to cost me 40 bucks less per month than what i was already paying i'm not kidding you this is how they're how this is their marketing strategy. Give the fucking store away, and you and get they, to sell the iPhone on the black market for a profit. <laughs> I, I, I I very well could have, but no, actually, I gave it to, I gave it to, to, to my daughter. So um, and so now it, it, it it's like these these no brainer deals that they're offering you to to get their service. Here's another thing they did. I took over my mother in law's Direct TV account because I'm a good son in law. Okay, and it's one less bill for her I have to worry about. So I did this. I switched the billing over to my name, but technically, because it's in my name now, it's a new account. Guess what? I'm getting the first two years half off on that, and it's not even a new account. It just got switched over to my name. So they are AT and T is 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 just pulling out all the stops and trying to. Well, they have to. They're they're on the ropes financially, so. Right. Uh... You know they they need to market the hell out of this. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, honestly, I want to switch to Verizon for because because the coverage is better in Las Vegas, but I can't. <laughs> I can't justify the cost. I mean, I'm saving so you're, much you're money. You're too plugged in. Team. You're in the ecosystem, yeah. man. I oh, totally. That and Verizon, okay, so, despite the coverage, Verizon's a, sh a shit company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, AT and T isn't really that much better. I mean, uh, I love the way that. Um, uh, oh crap. Uh, John uh, John Oliver every week like just kind of 
pokes at AT and T. AT and T, yes. Um, and uh, it, it just makes fun of them, even though he's, you know, they're technically his boss. Right. Um, so yeah, so that that tells you what John Oliver thinks of them. Well, one is um, less shit than the other. <laughs> so, like, for right now, I am content. <laughs> but which to... one's less shit, uh, John or Oliver? <laughs> oh, no. See, even John Oliver has to make fun of it. Like he's, he's nothing's original about him. He just makes fun. He does the same thing Letterman used to do about Comcast, and but he does it so well mm -hmm. is the thing. Plus, no, it's not that he does it well. He just does it in a British accent. That's exactly that, with that, periodic that cameos said? from Stephen Colbert. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm sick of John Oliver. It's like I, that. It, it, he's he's just it's run its course is the Adam Driver bit. Oh my and God, I love it. Did you watch the latest one? Yes. He comes up with these new ways of describing Adam Driver. They're just- Of sexualizing <laughs> after Adam Driver. And he admits it. He's like, my colleagues think there's something wrong with me. He says, I don't care. It is sexualized. Yeah, yeah. The ulti, he's taken his man crush just too far, man. Yeah, no, it's, just, I, I, think I, I want to see how much farther he can go, frankly. I think he's just killing it, though. It's just beating the It, it to totally death. works for me. Okay, so here's a list of things that HBO Max will have on launch and see if it sweets the pot for any of you all. So uh, in addition to the upcoming so-called Snyder Cut, uh, they have the full sets of The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and The Matrix trilogies. All good. Um, all the Lego movies. Oh. Uh, all of the DC uh, Universe movies, Joker, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, Suicide, Shazam, Aquaman, and every Batman and Superman movie of the last 40 years. <laughs> nice. Uh, this one's interesting if you like Japanese animation, uh, Studio uh, Ghibli animation, Ross anime Sears films <laughs> um, that have never been released for streaming in the US before are going to be available on HBO Max. My that wife is old. Considering Studio that might actually, is supposed uh, to be a Disney that company. That might get me thinking a bit. Wow. I do like those, uh, those uh, movies, uh, the Studio Ghibli movies and whatnot. Those are pretty good. Uh, yes, agreed. Uh, other anime selections, uh, like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood oh. and other top titles from anime focus such streaming service Crunchyroll, which is also owned by AT&T. Nice. Um, classic movies like The Wizard of Oz, Casablanca, Citizen Kane, Gone with the Wind, The Shining, Singing in the Rain, 2001 Space Odyssey, The Goonies, Blade Runner, The Final Cut, Nightmare on, on Elm Street <coughs> franchise, and many others. And newer hits like Crazy Rich Asians and A Star is Born, the Lady Gaga version. Um, they will ultimately have more than 18,000 movies, says the company. And uh, then also a bunch of TV series like, of course, Friends, which they've stolen away from Netflix. <laughs> and uh, Big Bang Theory. They paid for Big Bang Theory $500 million. Yep. Damn. For the rise to that. It. Yep. That but half a billion. I mean, I like Big Bang Theory, but come on. Is it that? Is it worth half a billion dollars? Seriously, apparently somebody it, thought uh, so. But, yeah, may, probably, but a group but of people it, thought so in order to authorize a purchase like that. I guess. I mean, did they did they pay for it, or is it was just reallocation of funds within the corporate account? Uh, I'm not sure. Because uh, Warner, it, Warner, makes, Warner, 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 Warner owns, owns the, yeah, Big Bang Theory. Uh, right. This is this reminds me of a deal in the '90s when Spike, um, they licensed all the. Uh, Star Trek series from Paramount who owns Spike. So that's what that sounds like to me, Jason. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it is still money that's flowing from one place to the other. I mean, just because you own, you know, a subsidiary company doesn't mean that right. the money yes. you earn is sits in the same pot. It doesn't. Right. So right. Right. each one has to hold up its own end of the of the bargain. So um uh also um that, I want to say something. That classic library that that to me, out of all this I've heard so far, that is the most exciting thing to me. It, it, the, the the classic films library that you just brought up. What I'm hearing is here are a bunch of movies that you can't find anywhere else on streaming. And because sure. I mean, it's like you brought up titles there that like I've said to myself many times. Oh, I wonder if this is on Netflix, Amazon, yada yada, and I haven't been able to find it. And it's not and, right. It, hey. Right, and they're and they're gonna have them. So that's great. So that would mean uh, they'll probably have Babylon Five too, wouldn't they? That's a, isn't that Warner Brothers? Um, I'm not sure about that. They took it off Amazon Prime, so 
Well, that doesn't yeah, mean anything. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I will tell you that that's one thing. That is one thing that really pisses me off about Amazon. But that's all, folks. Amazon Prime is. It's not like with with Netflix where if something's on there, you know it's going to be on there for two years. With Amazon Prime, it's going to be on there and it could be gone in four months. It's like what what the hell? I didn't get a chance. Well, but that's not necessarily Amazon's choice. Um, no, I understand that. That's how their deals work out. And I hate those. I it, it's like it's a it's a crappy deal for us subscribers, is what I'm saying. And that's that's it's just the lack of consistency for how long titles remain remain on yeah. the Yeah. Well, I mean, unfortunately that's something that to a certain extent is not completely within their control. So you know, oh, it's I understand. Hard to it, 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 right. It's like blaming the cable companies for how much co co the content they have to pay for costs. It's not really their fault. Well, here's really. the question for you guys then. Will they be able to, to compete with Peacock's unique selection of The Conqueror, where John oh, Wayne God. stars as no. <laughs> Genghis Khan? No. Oh, my God. I remember that. No. I didn't know I was in the film. Oh, God. I, I don't no. think I'm planning on, on uh, subscribing to The Peacock. It just doesn't. <laughs> Not that, just because of the name. Uh, the name sounds horribly offensive. The uh, right, Katy Perry subscribing to the Peacock. There's I'm nothing sure offensive about Peacock. It's a bird. It's the lo It's the icon and logo yeah, of NBC know. since we its know, beginning. We know. It's a cop. And we and know. I think it's a great icon and logo. I just think it's a terrible name. <laughs> I agree. From I mean, I think, well, I think what's it, I think the it, alternative? What's the brand. scientific name of of Peacock? I, that's a good question. Anyone want to look I, I think it fits or... their brand, you know, and, and it's unique. And it's how about just universal <clears throat> streaming? I mean, there you go. There's um, one for you. Pavo Siristasis. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work with, either. With the Office and Parks and Rec um, leaving Netflix and joining Peacock, I mean, I, you know, again, I think that we're just seeing the um, you know, the segmentation of the market increase. And the shows that people want to watch are moving to all these different services. And um, well, and eventually some of them are going to fail. And what happens in the have. wake of of that failure is that those shows will return to where they were before. Maybe they'll you fail. Know. You think you think the studio? You think you think the ones controlled by the major studios are going to fail? Well, the, the, here's the thing. Some of them, some of them will return. Some of them won't return. Uh, no, the the stuff will always be licensed somewhere. Um, as far as 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 far as I'm aware, I don't know of any place that has everything of Stargate after Gatecast collapsed. Um, um, you can get Stargate on Prime. Yeah, all of Prime. Prime. Wait a minute, everything. Stargate's back on Prime. All I saw was Atlantis yeah. the other day. No, it's all on Prime. Okay, it's back again. Well, we know um, of one service and... that is currently in the process of failing, but we're covering that a little later. Quibi. Yeah, Quibi. Oh just, yeah, Quibi. We're going to be guessing. talking about Quibi. I was just guessing. Yeah, no, that was a good, that was a very good guess and informed guess. I don't guess. think I've ever heard uh, a, couple, a few more items on the HBO uh, Max launch list. Uh, all the past seasons of Rick and Morty. Oh. Um, well. 11 well. of the most recent seasons of Doctor Who, plus another three to come. Uh, some say, in fact, that because of Doctor Who's falling ratings in the UK, that it's the HBO Max deal that's actually keeping it going. Um, Surprise. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, see, BBC America. They've been saying this for a while. The BBC America is what's been keeping it going in the U.S. So mm -hmm. it, I would not. That does not shock me at all. If this is the resuscitation it needs, mm -hmm. yeah, possibly. And see, here where I live, BBC America isn't even regular cable; it's premium cable. Is it really? Yeah. Oh my God! Sure it. But not. It's second tier. It's not like HBO or Showtime, right? Right. You. you yeah. Because they you still have. The, Commercials. You have, you right. It's pay. that package. That extra yeah, you package have to pay it. You, right. have, you have to pay an too. additional fee to get. get Direct TV is the same way. It's the exact same way. You've got to pay for that. That extra. Yeah, you have basic, extended basic, and then premium. Thank you. That you got it exactly, yeah. Carlos. Right. And it's been that way for you know, forty years. Um, okay. Some other series that are going to be on it. Uh, the West Wing is going to be going to HBO Max, and that Ooh. actually might bring me over because I love the West Wing. <laughs> um, uh, Pretty Little Liars, Batwoman, Riverdale, spinoff Katie Keene uh, will be on HBO Max. Uh, all of South Park will be on oh, HBO Max. It's complete man. full back catalog, uh, as well as streaming new episodes. Well, uh, here's, um, here's, I'll tell you what the, what a deciding factor would for me be. Because I'm not looking at the 1199. I'm looking at the 1499 after 12 months, okay? Like I said, I'm already getting it because I'm an HBO, HBO subscriber. 
and I will continue to get it. But here's here's what it comes down to. As an HBO subscriber, I pay $17.99, I get access, and I'll have access to HBO Max. But also, as an HBO subscriber, I get a total of 10 HBO channels on DirecTV, on top of being able to use HBO Max. That's an that's that costs seventeen ninety nine a month. Okay, so we're talking about a difference of three dollars for me to get the extra, an extra nine 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 ten channels. Okay, do you actually this, ever watch any of those HBO channels the, live? Because I that, don't. That's exactly the point I was about to make. The reality of it is, I am literally subscribing to Directv HBO now to simply watch everything on HBO Go. That's how it is. I yeah. never watch anything. I don't even DVR shit anymore because it's going to be never right either. on HBO Go at the same time. So when I, it's, when I had HBO, I did the same thing. Yeah. So it's like I'm, I'm asking myself down the road here, do I really need to even subscribe to it through DirecTV anymore? But I'm going to guarantee you what's going to happen is DirecTV is going to say, oh, no, no, keep it in, in your in your package, in your, in your DirecTV package, and we'll do this for you. Or something. They'll they'll incentivize me to keep it. If they incentivize it, then maybe. I mean, I, right. I think what um, Apple did uh, with Apple TV Plus, which is that you know, if you got your you know, if you got your new iPhone uh, this year, then right. you got a year yeah. of HD uh, of uh, Apple TV Plus, and um, I'm willing to do that. And so far, I've been liking it. So yeah. Um, so m maybe that will work for HBO Max as well. We'll see. Um, they're going to have new Looney Tunes cartoons on Ooh. there. Uh, a show with Elmo called the Not Too Late Show. I heard about that one. That sounds like fun. It's not Cars with Faces, but your kid might still like it, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I think uh, Doom Patrol is going to be moving over to... Um, uh, season two of Doom Patrol is going yep. over to HBO Max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, okay. Is DC so here, channel shutting down. Then I mean, is that kind not of that I know of? No, they not, have not think, announced that yet by any means. My theory is that there's going to be a transition from yep. from that over the course of the next couple of years, which is pretty, fine. I because I you know I, I do enjoy the programming on 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 on, the, on DC. So I mean, yeah. Uh, after new all, they've still got new time. shows coming out on DC Universe. Stargirl is yeah. coming out uh, next week, I think. Well, they next also week? announced, though, that they're putting um, Swamp Thing Season 1 on the CW. Yeah, they're airing it on CW. Which is Finally, really? right. That was kind of a, if I recall correctly, that was kind of a snafu. That's going to be series. heavily edited. I mean, because that was a TVMA show. I imagine it's gonna, that's going to be heavily edited on the CW. Maybe. I don't know. Have you watched Riverdale? Well, look, Riverdale, they don't drop, they don't drop F bombs on Riverdale. I can pretty much that's, guarantee well, that. Well, that's true, but that's, um, yeah. So they've, they've got uh, some new content coming, um, new episodes of Adventure Time. Uh, which oh, I love the, the BMO show. Oh, the BMO show. Yeah, the the yes. BMO show, which I said a link to, which I'm That's, so excited. That is yeah. definitely going to get my subscription once. That's once yeah, coming that, June 25th. Next yeah. Week. Yeah, that was my that was my deciding factor right there. I mean, for if, if I had to, that would have been it right there. For those who don't watch Adventure Time, go back, watch it now, and your life will be better instantaneously. It, it looks really <laughs> cartoony, but it, it's a, it, it gets deep. You'd be surprised. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's brilliant. It's 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 wonderful sci-fi fantasy. It really is, and it's, oh, yeah. it's so hidden in that. And I I remember it's like, you, Ross, you you've watched it enough. You remember the flashback episodes with Ice King? Oh, those dude. are just heartbreaking. Oh my god, dude! It's some of the best TV ever fucking written. It it's is. So good. It absolutely is. <laughs> it's it, yeah, really, beautifully it, tragic. I will never listen to the Cheers. Uh, theme song the same way again. Exactly. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Greg Seriously, Berlanti I hear it and I tear up now. Yep. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking about it too. I, uh, uh, be strong. Um, okay. Speaking of things that make people tear up, Green Lantern is going to get another shot. Uh, uh -oh. Greg Berlanti is going to uh, be leading a new series on on HBO Max for uh, the Green Lantern. Then um, maybe it'll may, maybe it'll actually work this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Berl I, I love Berlanti. He's great. Yeah, he he's, uh, if anyone can do it, it's him. Terribly. Yeah. Didn't he do the first one? The one oh. with the. Uh, no, that was. 
That was oh, uh, what's his name? That was Zack Snyder. Jeff. Uh, would... Jeff. Oh crap! What's his last name? Jeff. Let's just blame Zack Snyder. <laughs> yeah, we'll just blame Zack Snyder. <laughs> That was a, uh, yeah, shoot and miss. Uh, I, I, Mindy I, Kaling, by the way, she's got a, a, a show coming up, a half hour comedy on HBO Max called College Girls. Um, and I mean, she's like, she's all over, she's everywhere these days, Mindy Kaling. She's got, you know, that show on Netflix that's been doing, has been doing great. Um, uh, so well, our, good for her. Was, I mean, Martin Campbell directed. Uh, on Green Lantern, but well, no, but the- Berlandi was a producer, and he wrote. He was had a hand at writing. Berlandi and Guggenheim had a hand in the screenplay too. He did have a hand in the screenplay. Yep, he did. But my God, there's you're like- forgetting one guy. Uh, he's he's done a lot of actually really good work. Jeff Johns. PC, Jeff Johns. That's who ah. I was thinking of. Um, and I th- I think his approach just didn't work here. Um, it's not uh, that honestly, it's it. not that horrible. You know, I'm it's, gonna say this. I enjoyed the movie. I, you no, know, I, I didn't hate it. It just was it. it was overblown and it didn't really get to the heart of what makes that character a great character. Yeah, I that um, I'll agree with. And again, I think w- this is where I <coughs> the, the failure is on this is that I think that character is very well suited for a series treatment as opposed to a yeah, well, trying to do a, a film, a film too. But back to Mindy Kaling. Here's what I noticed about Mindy Kaling. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Jason. Go ahead. I was gonna say I think it's also suited for an ensemble, not a single lead, because of the different Green Lanterns Lanterns. and because of the, you know, that you know you could almost do a, if you did if you're smart you could almost do a uh, what do you call it? Uh-huh. Um, oh, like an anthology. Like an anthology where you have different. They have talked about Lanterns. that. The Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. Or, or the lantern cores, because now there's apparently every goddamn kind of lantern you can think, colored lantern you can think of. I Black, hope they don't do that. They green, just, they just red, are introducing purple, yellow. The gold, gold is coming out in yeah, Legion of like, Superheroes. They're like lightsabers in a uh, in in. It, it the, really is because they are tied to different emotional states. Apparently, green yeah. is willpower. They're they're, they're moon lanterns. <laughs> Someone cue the lightsaber. <laughs> right. from, well, fun fact: the there was a uh, IDW did a crossover. And Scotty, the uh, Kelvin Universe, Scotty reverse engineered the Lantern Rings. Now oh. Starfleet has now now in its own separate multiverse. Nice. Starfleet has a bunch of power rings instead of phasers and tricorders. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, you, that's uh, pure I, fan I, I actually kind of like that. Yep. Yeah. Do you know what that? Power the phasers by that, the core. Do, do you know yeah, what that means, Ross? Hmm? That means that that separate hmm. universe of Star Trek. Now has the Schwartz. Yes, it does. <laughs> the, uh, the Schwartz. Uh, the Schwartz. The Schwartz. Um, okay, so let's move on to because we, we spent a lot of time on this one, but it was this was a great discussion. Um, I was gonna I was gonna bring up about Mindy Kaling too, though. By the way, and any, I, I'm basically of the opinion of that anything Mindy Kaling is involved with, I want to know more about because yeah. she was. It wasn't just on The Office. If you if you go if you watch the credits, okay, on how many of those episodes she wrote yes. she is fucking she's, brilliant she's brilliant she's brilliant she's um, hilarious so in yeah, the off, um, in the office ladies podcast one of the things that jenna fisher and angela kids you talk about is the evolution of the um of the character um and, and, and at what point what's her name i can't i'm blanking on the character name but when she actually just goes full mindy like when like <laughs> you know when the character evolves from like the you know Kind of like that uptight, like yeah. to when it just blow goes full blown Mindy. It's about halfway through season two. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's that, that's not surprising. Yeah. and actually, that's really when the character became the best. I mean, we, right? We, you know, that's really where when that happened. So, yeah, without 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 question. And how are we all drawing a blank on Kelly Kapoor? <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm like, why am I having to look this up? I should know this. Kelly <laughs> Kapoor. Okay, so let's move on to our next big news item of the week, and that is the news that uh, Ruby Rose, actor Ruby Rose, is going to be leaving the star, the lead role of Batwoman in the eponymous show uh, as it... Um, 
Definitely. concluded its first season and uh, is about to go into its second season. Uh, for reasons unannounced, uh, she thanked basically everybody for everything, but is still leaving. Uh, and we don't know why. We do know that she um, uh, was injured uh, and could have been injured very, very badly uh, doing a stunt for the show, but no one knows if that's related or played a, f a factor into her decision, but, um, but it's a big deal. And um, uh, there's all kinds of names being thrown about for, they are recasting it, uh, the role uh, for the second season. Um, but uh, what do you all think about the passing of uh, Ruby Rose as Batwoman? Uh, reading the article itself, it reads like, the the uh, the other sources that the writer used for this article from inside collecting all this information it seems like there was a oh, how do I describe this it's a it's a it's a Catherine Janeway and that other lady moment <laughs> oh uh, Genevieve Bujold that yeah it's, it's 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 kind of like that yeah. but at the same time it well that like was it was... like she didn't even get through the pilot episode true you true. know this but is a full season <laughs> it also seems like there was some internal friction between miss rose and the rest of the cast as well not 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 just the actual film cast but like the production cast and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, like, right. like there well, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, Friday's saying that it was she just wasn't happy with the long hours and she wasn't really getting along with people on the set. So that kind of goes with what's saying. And that's coming from Variety, so I think that's a pretty decent Probably. source. Probably. Yeah. Well, I mean, what what is her other big gig today? Orange is the New Black, right? Orange is the New Black. And she wasn't in all the episodes of Orange is the New Black. No, but she she was a standout. She was a standout for sure. My point being is she didn't have quite the schedule that the other that like she did on a twenty-two episode season of the uh, show. True, twenty-two episodes is grueling. And in, how in, in the lead, no less. You know, and what these people go through for their superhero training on these shows. I mean, just to stay in shape. I mean, that's got to be grueling. Plus all the filming and everything. And she that's probably not a good wasn't. Point. I hadn't thought about that. That's not. A, a bad yeah, point but you know all. what? You're getting paid to work out, so. Yeah, but yeah, my, my heart does not bleed for that. <laughs> no, but the... see, but if you're not used to it, then I mean, it might be something that she wasn't prepared for. I mean, compared to the show, uh, I like doubt that, I, I doubt it was it was about that. I mean, most most well, actors of that of that uh, age range are used to putting in that kind of, especially yeah, but days. after come. Yeah, but after recovering from a major injury like she had, yeah. Well, you know. the, definitely the injury I think played a, a role in this. Um, so yeah, I mean to the, to that extent, I, I I agree with you, but I, I don't I, think look, in general. I, I'll put it this way: I had issues with I had issues with Miss Rose since her first DC crossover thing because she just constantly seemed like an uptight ass, and I'm like, I don't really think this is going to work out for her to be a superhero well, I mean, that was, if, that, if that was if that was being portrayed in her acting there's no telling what was going on behind the set i just thought it was a bad wig that was my problem with that moment it was a bad <laughs> wig kind of relieved like, because bad... it, personally uh she bears a striking resemblance to a guy i used to work with on my last ship before i left the navy and it's something I can't really unsee. <laughs> he, he walked around in a bat suit and no, hair. no. I'm saying that the resemblance between Ruby Rose oh my and my goodness. former shipmate, they were practically identical, despite huh. Ruby being her and he being him. Oh, I would be okay with that. Uh, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, what? What was that? Uh, they, we what actually made that? a joke about it on the ship that they someone pasted a picture of Ruby Rose on Shut his locker. Up. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I think we're, you're burying the lead. Did Carlos just admit that he would be straight for Ruby Rose? I he did. Sounds like it. I. She's a very good what? actress. <laughs> quite androgynous <laughs> yes yes indeed and you heard I'm, it here I'm first, okay with folks that. you heard it here first <laughs> all well, right so that carlos and i have same taste in women <laughs> maybe you know or 
<laughs> there may be a guy out there for you, Jason. <laughs> His name is David Bowie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, he's on Ross's old ship. Oh my. Well, okay, let's take a turn towards uh, the Star Trek franchise for a few stories here. Um, the big story last week, as you all recall, was the announcement of Strange New Worlds. The Captain Did we talk about that last week? For pretty much the entire episode. Um, it was worth talking about the whole hours. episode. <laughs> so uh, this week, um, uh, I think it was Screen Rant had an article in which they were speculating about that little uh, exchange that Pike had with Giorgio. Um, when she admitted to him that she was from the mirror universe and he was like, what mirror universe? But it was, he what? clearly was being sarcastic. Like he already knew this yeah, yeah. and uh, that was never explained. And so Screen Rand is going on to say that um, we may be getting a mir mirror universe episode in the new Pike show in order to explain what that little exchange was about. <laughs> um, Ross, you're, you get to go first on this one since you're having the most emotional reaction. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing one of Pike on Discovery. He says he's been fully briefed about what happened to them with Lorca. He was briefed on the Mirror Universe. He knows that the Lorca who is in command of Discovery was from the Mirror Universe. And therefore, he would have been briefed that the Giorgio that came back with Burnham was the Empress. Okay, I think that's a reach because you could have briefed them on what Lorca did without revealing that he was from the other universe. How could you not? Because they assumed, like everyone else, that he was the Lorca of this universe. And yes, what he but did in to briefing crew, about who he was and why the crew would be... They never said that he was briefed about the mirror universe. Yes, that, that's never stated. He said he was briefed on what happened with Lorca. And that means taking the discovery to the mirror universe uh, maybe, against but their that, will. Not that's not necessarily specific, given given how. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that 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 may be a a, a, a quantum leap in in faith there. Okay, in, in terms then of look at it this that. way: He's being told he's taking command of discovery immediately after their refit, after coming back from the mirror universe. He would have been briefed on that too. Pike is a highly decorated, very sure. well-regarded captain, the best in Starfleet, and the commanding officer of the flagship of the Federation. He has a very high clearance. The Enterprise no actually technically wasn't the flagship at the time. But but if you remember from watching the exchange between Pike and Burnham, uh, he, he was asking questions about Giorgio from the get-go. Right, but I think what Ross would say, and I'm switching devil's advocates, what Ross would say is that's about Giorgio, not about Lorca. Um, so, but yes, because he clearly thought that the, the Giorgio that he saw was the Giorgio that he knew and he might've put two and two together if, um, it, if, if you're correct, it wasn't, Ross. It wasn't, uh, it was about, um, Tyler, not, not, uh, Giorgio. No, he asked about Giorgio too. Okay. Okay. Cause he was commenting on how different she was, you know, um, um, I, can I bring up the, the obvious elephant in the room here and that is that he knew the his universe as Giorgio was already it was dead I mean didn't he well supposedly everyone thought that but you know I, my, my fog I, of I, war I, man he wasn't okay. around but so. what, I, what I'm I what Ross said is exactly without even knowing what I I'll, I'll be considering I hate screen rant with a passion like <laughs> I, I would like to chew them up and then poop them out and then just flush and flush and flush. And, but I, as much as I don't think this is going to happen, I do like the theory. It is fun, but I it, exactly where Ross is in that even before this little theory came out, I, that's what I, I, what Ross says is exactly what I assumed happened. He just knew cause he was briefed on it. I just figured that. I mean, that, I'd that's, like to think more that it was something he figured out. Um, but I, because he's that smart, but but that's that's an extension of your theory, Ross, not a contradiction of it. Um, but because uh, I, I just think of, I just like thinking that Pike is the kind of guy who put two and two together, taking what he was briefed on, matching that, pairing that up with his observations on on Giorgio, who everyone thought was dead, and the way she was behaving so much differently from the woman he knew, and uh, and and then he 
figured that out. Safe but, to say, uh, Prime Giorgio probably didn't flirt with everybody. You are stabby. You are stabby. <laughs> Could he just? I a... miss. I miss Prime Giorgio, though. I just thought. She Did was you just great. call me Poppy? <laughs> My favorite line of season two. Oh, that is a oh yeah, that's My right. Absolute favorite line of season two. <laughs> is it that possible? Was... Is it Go possible ahead, Pike was just a really good poker player? Could yeah. be. It could be. It was just, you know, um, like, like, you know, like, but is it is the kind of thing? It was an it was an interesting and you know even setting aside your hatred of screen rant, Sean, it, it is a legitimate question. The idea of they had this exchange. It was on screen. It's not explained. Why did they throw that in unless it was something significant in some way? Um, well, and, we, and, and not for nothing, we have noticed that there really is nothing insignificant on this series and in exactly. on Picard. Um, but, you know, I do like, I, I kind of, now that we're talking about, I kind of like the notion of um, he's the captain. So he always has to know everything, even when he doesn't. So he's quick, he was quick on his feet with that response to her, mm -hmm. because even if he didn't know, she, he's not going to let her know that he didn't know. Exactly. He, Good point. You know, like, like immediately, like uh, he's got like he's got an answer prepared for everything because he, he's just based on his own experience of you know I'm the captain. I I'm supposed to know these things. I mean, if I don't know these things. I know these things. That's what the crew needs to see. See, I'll be totally honest. That feels like a kind of a Captain Kirk swagger to me. Yeah, what that's fine. Universe. That's fine. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with them them plugging a little Captain Kirk into Captain Pike. <laughs> now, don't nobody say that's what she said. God, because that's just <laughs> gross. Stop it. Well, you know, and okay, here's the thing: okay. like, uh, if you look at like like Jane May's and her assessment of Kirk in that era, like like she talks about that being cowboys and stuff. So I yeah, think there has to right. be a little bit of that swagger. There has to be a little bit of that like pioneer yeah um, they really were roughness yeah, yeah this, it was this really notion, a frontier right, right this, this notion that 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 kirk was was the first uh the, the first sheriff in town the first cowboy i don't think would stand up you know he, he wasn't the first first guy out there that had that swagger out there on the final frontier and that's why i don't like archer because he didn't have that swagger didn't have none of that no milk toast he was like oh. <laughs> the car See, everybody talks about John Wayne. Nobody says shit about Chuck Connors. Nobody remembers Chuck Connors. I remember Chuck Connors. Great he, ain't no, he ain't no John Wayne. Oh. Yeah, but he had that swagger as the Rifleman. Well, that's true. That's true. But John Wayne had the movies, mm -hmm. and the Rifleman was a TV show. show. Yeah, so <laughs> back when that made a difference. I watched a few episodes of Rifleman back when I worked at Walmart when me TV was <laughs> Okay, so let's take a short, uh, you know, little tangent into uh, parody territory as we also as we bring up uh, another CW show, Legends of Tomorrow, which has turned into this sort of self-referential, uh, quasi-comic uh, superhero series over over its what five seasons now? Has it been five seasons? Already? I love the new intro. The new intro is awesome. And uh, so this upcoming week's episode is a journey into the past of TV history in which uh, the legends imagine themselves as characters on a show like Star Trek. And this is what it looks like in, uh, in, in the show. Uh, I think it's a, a, an amazing reproduction. My favorite part, of course, is the go-go boots and mini, mini scants on the, on the dude's in the background. <laughs> it, uh, is. <laughs> it is. I mean, the skin or the short shirts or whatever, that's fine. It's the go-go boots that I think are the, the real choice here. And um, still cause... still better effects than the Orville, too. It's amazing. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. It's fucked up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's really the only cheesy part of, of what you see here, production design-wise, is the, uh, are there their phaser weapons. But well, the rest of it, I think, is spot right? on. What's that? What add, look what they did with the actual <laughs> ship itself, though. If you get a shot of that, 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 that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it, yeah, the sets actually look look pretty cool. I just have the one the one photo on here, but the the Trello has a, a link to uh, a lot more photos for those of you who want to check. It so out. Um, I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing, and like you guys mentioned, the the scant and go go boots on dudes. I'm seeing this kind of blending of both 
uh, the you know TNG era and and toss theme as like a bridge set. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can see that. Here's another. I do have one more shot that I got on there that I will share with you. There you go. Um, you get a little bit more of the, the bridge there and uh, such. But, but I think the costumes are, are great. I, it reminds me of the Carol Burnett parody. Yeah. <laughs> that looks so cool. Yeah, so that's so uh, does the Wave Rider week. have some well endowed nacelles in this episode? The Wave Rider, <laughs> you know, has the Wave Rider has an entire room set aside for all the loot that uh, what's his name Heat Wave has been gathering up. Every when they go into the past, that's how they pay for everything is they steal it from the different time periods they go to. Apparently, that's a thing. Um, okay. <laughs> So um, so that's this week. Give it a shot. See what you think. Uh, maybe we can talk about it next week. And in our last bit of Trek-related news, uh, and some of you may not want to even talk about this for very much, but, nope. <laughs> uh, but the uh, trailer for the fan film of a fan film, oh, XNR Interlude, is, um, was released this week um, to... I'm not sure how to discuss how to characterize the the reactions. Maybe we can go around and and uh, probably get a good <laughs> taste from each of you of of what those reactions might be. Um, sure. But uh, uh, I will admit that in choosing which screenshot I was going to go with for uh, this graphic, I I couldn't resist That's the so bug-eyed uh, Captain That's Garth. So uh, on it, because I mean, look at his eyes. Really, are they're like Michelle Bachman eyes? He looks um, like he's taking a shit in the captain's chair. <laughs> anyway, so it was released. It looks um, like he is a shit in the captain's chair. The significant thing about <laughs> this film is that it is an Axonar film that is has not being is not being made by Alec Peters. Uh, it's being made by his chief apologist, Jonathan Lane, uh, of Fan Film, the Fan Film Factor blog uh and he is completing it on schedule on budget for only twenty thousand dollars within a year time frame whereas the actual and the actual uh that's just petty justin that's i think for twenty thousand dollars you're getting your money's worth on this one i yeah. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ding jonathan on that um yeah, and, you know he's delivering he's delivering and I, and i think you know he ooh. obviously loves Alec Peters, he loves Garth, he loves the story behind Axnar, that's why he, he wrote this. Um, but it's if anything, it's just showing casting Alec Peters, I think, in the, in the worst possible light because he had $1.7 million and five years and still couldn't produce anything. Whereas yeah. Jonathan Lane yeah, right. just went and did it with $20,000, it's done, there it is. You've got a, uh, you know, admittedly kind of weird retro trailer uh out of this but but it's done and it's you know and I'll, I'll say the cgi i think is decent for the for the budget level on this uh i mean we all know the story because he published it published it as a comic you know a year ago or longer uh so there's no mystery around this show around, around this uh story um but but he's delivering and alec peters has yet to do so so um thoughts opinions how many of you have seen the um the trailer what do you think of the trailer which is you can talk about the format for it which is kind of odd well and, you know uh, i've seen it <laughs> uh, i know you've seen it sean because you've already done a parody of it which is hilarious actually uh called interlude <laughs> like like waterloo or water closet are we um, have more, yeah, and and for those, glide. yes and those who haven't seen it uh, all the scenes with alec peters we replaced him with a turd. So uh, <laughs> there's uh, there's okay. more coming. Yeah, there's more coming. We plan on many spoofs of this. But here's the thing. My my whole point of this is, in here, and I have plenty of reason to really crap on Jonathan Lane. No pun intended here. Um, and not just for his uh, his 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 propaganda dizing of Alec Peters in Axnar and his his unwavering support against all, all else. But he's also taken many, many shots at me, and um, and he's also 
been he, he's been Alex's proxy for threatening me with legal action. And to sum up how much Lane hates me, he actually did I think twenty five hundred words on me on the troll I pulled. Uh, during the first week mm -hmm. of the Action Hour convention, the first weekend. Instead of writing about the Action Hour convention, he dedicated 2,500 to me, 2,500 words to me on that troll. That said, I am in complete agreement with Carlos on this on multiple levels. First and foremost, all credit where credit is due, okay? With 20 grand, he put a goal out there, set it, and immediately got the right people on the job to do it. Professionals who know what the fuck they're doing and he sat back and let them do their job, put his vision into motion, and they did it. And to that end, um, you know, this, this is, I don't think, I, I think the problem with, with Lane on this is that he is, he has such tunnel vision when it comes to Alec Peters that it has not occurred to him, just like it has not occurred to Peters, how bad this makes Peters look. I mean, how incredibly bad the optics are on this, that Lane was able to complete this in a year, in a year with 20 grand. And we are now six Please, years what? later with 1.7 million gone. And Peters is out there every week trying to try doing videos where he's showing off hostess cupcakes and trying to sell people patches, no, no fat, <laughs> no books and backpacks. I mean, and, and still with no ending no end in sight whatsoever <laughs> as for when this thing is going mm. to be produced. So, I mean, I, this, when this finally does get released and I, and I, and I'm starting to sense that, cause I'm not the only one who, who pointed this out in different forums. People have picked up on this, that Lane has gotten this done while Peters is still languishing. So I think when this finally does get released, I think there's going to be a wave of neg negativity against Peters that neither one of these two guys are expecting. And, and, you know, obviously praising Lane for getting it done. Again, nothing but, but respect for Lane for doing this. He's, he's, he, he, he set out to accomplish a goal and he, and he has. So. Yeah. I mean, that, that's something definitely in, in Jonathan's favor is that he does, he does do what he says he's going to do. Um, you, definitely can't fault him for that um right but again, now the backlash i think with peters i think is gonna i think that gonna be definitely could happen um other right. thoughts travis you look like you had something to say um i mean you pretty much hammered the you hammered the you hit the nail on the head as far as um, my thoughts on the matter i'm very much the same as what you and sean are saying i do i gotta give credit where credit is due to jonathan lane i mean i don't really have any beef with him um I see him post in the group now and then uh, his blog posts, and I know that he is a bit of an a, a sympathizer with Peters. But I mean, I bet, I bet, um, I bet. <laughs> come on now. He is, he is the, Alec the Peters, the Joseph, Joseph Goebbels, okay? the voice of neutrality. I try not to take sides, especially since I didn't really get too um, involved in the Axonar debacle. But um, just this morning, I was actually thinking about the trailer as I was heading for work, and um, I mean. If you want my immediately immediate thoughts on the trailer, I thought the music was very unfitting for Star Trek, and I thought the editing. I guess it's an homage to some space nineteen ninety that I never that I never heard of. But I mean, I was just <sighs> like, I was very much just like, this is very ADHD editing. And then I remembered some of the other videos that Jonathan Lane has put on his channel. I'm like, well, I guess it fits in. So there's that. But um, I mean. I was just thinking again, um, just how has you and Carla, I mean, you and Sean put it, how very negative this shines on Peters because it's just nothing. There has been nothing, and he's got, and Blaine has something. And I just, I, I mean, that's throwing in like some of the things that Jonathan Lane, some of the hurdles that Jonathan Lane had to, um, overcome and getting I, this done I and mean, he had to replace an entire green screen right, i remember exactly. that yeah yeah I, right. I, 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 here's here's one thing to give to i made a video about I that mean, too i um 
Go ahead, Justin. Let's give Wayne credit on this one. Yes, he got this done on time and in and budget, too, because he didn't go back and have to ask for any more money on, like, how many Kickstarters. Well, he did, but there was, that was due to the, oh, the, was the screw-up on, on, on the green screen, which I, I'm not going to go I'm not going yeah, to give I'm, too yeah, much. Yeah, I'm not going to take him on that either. You know, the, the, that, you know, that, the, that was a good thing for him to do. He didn't take it out of the production fund. He actually, you know, he followed up that he screwed up. He admitted what happened was his fault. He didn't try to pass the buck on anybody but himself for not being, you know. I mean, he did the right thing on that. Had that been somebody like, say, Peters, he would have blamed everybody but himself. Well, that that isn't the truth. Oh, boy, oh, boy. God. I mean, you know, he would have blamed the sun for not shining in the right direction. Not you, Not you, son. Not you, son. Yeah. Not you, son. The you sun, find a the way. The actual might... sun. Oh, no, 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 but no, you never no. Know. he's actually blamed me before, so hey. Oh, okay, so there you go. Oh. There you go, perfect. It's all your fault. That, that, that's okay, there you go. Yeah. Like, dude yeah, literally yeah, went yeah. off on a friend's Facebook post. Like, Alec Peters went off on a tear on one of, on, on a friend named Nick's Facebook page uh, on his personal Facebook wall, because he was talking about the whole thing. And Alec Peters just storms in and makes this whole big, huge post about complaining about all this shit, and I'm like, dude, this is somebody else's Facebook page, and you're <laughs> acting like a petulant fucking child. That's what he does. And Peters, and Peters goes off on me. You know what I post after that? Fucking, that, that fucking Tranya child from the original series. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Howard. <laughs> oh, oh, God, Sean. Baylock. You gotta, you know, yeah, Baylock you know, we gotta do the that. First Federation. You know. Corporate you know we gotta do that. I so, mean, uh, other thoughts on the uh, trailer as a trailer? D- is well, it, is it an effective trailer? My my, my yeah. opinion on this is that um, I have not been critical of a single thing about it, and I will tell you why. Because it's a fan film, okay? Right. I, and so I, I I'm not expecting these uh, a, a you know, CBS All Access budget on this. Yeah, I'm expecting a fan film for production levels, and and all things considering, this seems like a, a gen a genuinely or generally a high bar set for for a fan film for 20k. You know, it looks pretty good to me. All things considering, I the the I actually I hate saying this, but you know, I think it's dopey to use the Space 1999 theme. But I liked it. <laughs> I couldn't say I didn't. But it, well, I mean, I mean I, it wouldn't have been my choice. But I, I, I it, it is fun, and I, it, it's because I'm, I am nostalgic over that show too. And I, it's like it didn't even occur to me until Carlos said what it was. I was like, oh my god, it is. And uh, yeah, and and, and it, I only realized it because I'd only recently rewatched, sev- you know, a few episodes of Space 1999, and and you know that was their very typical kind of opening thing. They have their opening theme and their uh, you know opening credits things and then they'd go into this like super jump cutty uh thing to disco music uh with scenes from from that week's episode and i hated it then and i hate it now <laughs> well my I mean, only problem <laughs> with this trailer i mean i love the show i like space 99 right. a lot but, but i hated though that those opening sequences yeah I will, I will say this about those jump cuts that I, if i if i will say anything about criticism that anything of, of would, would probably be my biggest problem with it. And the, and the, and the yeah. only reason why, because it was, it was so fast. It, it made it so incredibly difficult for us to put little dog shit images on Alec Peters. It, it, it was very, <laughs> very difficult. I'm not although, sure although that's a criterion me, although, most other well, people would okay. bring. Hey, Sean, this although you missed his yeah, face sometimes. His face moved, you would yeah. do the dog yeah. shit. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, see, Justin and I, this is a cooperative effort. So we're, okay. we're, we're, we're worked on this, on that side of it together. And, needs and, and, more, and, needs more Ewok. I, we're going to work I'm, more. Yeah, oh, but there's some Ewoks in there too. Why not? I'm of the mindset that fan films are best when they're made for the people who are making them right i love that and, I think and so fan- yes and no i mean <laughs> well you see you're different though carlos because you're, you're you're now a film producer right and so so there's something that got into you while you were doing these things that now you want to now you want to actually do work for other people but i again I, I go back to this idea that like like in its purest form right fan films are about getting together and and just celebrating the work right. through your own art Bingo. and it's the it's, it's it's the act of creating that art that should be the rewarding factor you know i don't care you know i'm i'm i am the og hater right i think 
I think I'm the person who started talking smack about Al- Axnar and Alec Peters back in, you know, wh- right when they launched the the go not the GoFundMe the um first Kickstarter. Kickstarter. No, no, yeah, no. The no. What's the other? What's the other one? I, Indiegogo. 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 Right when they did the Indiegogo and they said, "Oh, we need another 1.5 million dollars," and I'm like, "What? What the fuck?" But uh, you know, yeah, if, I was going up when they yeah, first if, <laughs> if if Jonathan Lane and his group had fun doing this. And that's what they want to have, how they want to express their fan, then more power to them. You know, I, again, you know, there's only one fan film that I think is actually really good. And that's um, Star Trek Continues episode of Lolani that I really just from, you know, from soup to nuts, I think is probably just a really compelling story. Good acting, good visuals done in a 60 style. So, I mean, I'm not going to criticize him too much. I, I think, I think, you know, Obviously, he's up Peter's butt, and I don't like that because it just legitimizes Peter's. But overall, if you had fun, great job, Jonathan. Yeah, I agree. And and um, the other side of the story, I would say that I think my favorite fan films right now are being done by Gary O'Brien, um, who does the TNG fan films that that have come. Oh yeah, the uh, the the uh, Holy Core. Holy Core. Holy yeah. Core. Right. Yeah, and those and the other one he did before that, which I forgot, but they were too they were too wonderfully done. And I think he did them both for under for under ten grand each, and um, they they're I think they're like fifteen twenty minutes each, and they're straight up TNG episodes. He he got the spirit of them entirely, and he's and he got he, he got excellent performances out of his cast, and it's incredibly well produced. He actually built a shuttle cockpit for uh yeah yeah Marshall and it's like all out of cardboard it's amazing and it, it, it works it it, it really it, it really, really works. Good. I'll tell you it really works. um I mean I I think Holy Core is great and I think that Gary O'Brien's work is is really good my problem is that it it reproduces the TNG kind of feel too well like all of its flaws the flaws of 90s era oh, television yeah. Yeah, are, that, are just as as, well, uh, yeah, as right, visible but that, right but that's I think that was the point yeah I, no, I, I, I don't think that's the point um I, I don't think it has to be the point oh you're um, so cynical carlos <laughs> I, that's not cynical at all if anything it's like it's it's being too uh idealistic about about a fan film um well, I, you know i mean this sort of slavish devotion to have to reproduce the flaws along with the with the the quality stuff, I think is just it's 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 a waste of resources. Oh, no. but, but I, is it I, slavish devotion or is it just homage? I mean, that's that's the thing. Like like what Jason said about this is like you know like this is about celebrating your fandom here. Okay, and but it, an homage is not a copy. An homage is taking something that you appreciate well, from one well, body of work that you inject into another body of work that stands on its own. That's not what's going on here. Right, and okay, I don't want to disparage copy. Gary O'Brien because I think he did what he, he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish. It's it's fun to see it. And so I, I'm not I'm not trying to diss on him. So please don't don't um, uh, take that from me about about this. Uh, I'm going to contrast it, though, with the work that Aaron Vanderklee out of uh, Australia has done with his Enterprise era fan films. Those are awesome. Those take the strengths of, of the Enterprise premise and build upon them with, with their own. And I would say the same thing about Horizon um, uh, as well. Um, it, it, try, it minimizes the flaws, it maximizes the strengths of the premise and, and comes up with something that's fresh and original and compelling. And, um, uh, and I think that that's a, a much better response as a, as a fan film to, to an original <laughs> Than, uh, than I think what we see in, in some of the other ones. Yeah, Tommy Craft and then all in his basement too, which is the amazing part about that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean and, same with Andrew and Vanderclay. His first one was, yep. I mean, his set was like the size of my bedroom right. um, and he yeah. made it look like it was an Enterprise set. That was amazing. Um, he do wonderful things with cardboard and uh, styrofoam. And, and paint, and paint, <laughs> spray yeah, and paint. paint. Seriously. Right. Yeah. Um, well, what I love what Gary, what Gary did, and this is just a little bit tangential. What I love what Gary did is <laughs> Gary built, uh, he built very small set pieces and he extended. added, extended them with CGI, yeah. in mm-hmm. perfect CGI. That's what, uh, great. that's what, that's what I don't know if you remember the original Starship Extra. They done a lot of that with uh, some of their stuff. They uh, built the sm- small miniatures and then used uh, some green screen trickery to make it Looked like it was actually like bigger than what oh it was. that wasn't actually a green screen that they just the way that they set up the shot 
was they would have the the miniature in the foreground and then the the live action stuff in the background and oh, it was cool. just it was framed so that it looked like Force it was bigger. That's that's yeah, that forced perspective. perspective. That's that's some old school shit right there. Yeah, that like is old that. school shit. I like um, that. And and that was super impressive. The Exeter, the Exeter ones were one of, were the same films. Well, it's like it's like in TMP that the the that big long scene you see of the uh, in the in the uh, in the engine room, and what they did was it, they they had people at the at the end of the hall they had people shorter, as as the further right. down the hallway to make it look like it was they, were they actually away. had They're a kid away. they yeah. put a yeah, kid in the yeah. shoot yeah yep they sure did a kid yep. in all the way at the end <laughs> very clever that's hilarious. Um, so okay so that's our our thoughts this week on on fan I would, films i would like to say to both uh, sean and justin uh i disagree with you both that picture of alec peters that we saw at the beginning of this it looks like he is in absolute rage over the view screen in which something saying i am real is a sentient biscuit <laughs> Let's take one last glance at those at, at those eyes of I am a sentient biscuit. Oh god. Go. Oh, oh god. Oh, that was such a fun time. Oh. Can it be that I, it was all so simple I, then? The, I, I, look, my my biggest thought in all of this is okay, you can hate Lang, you can hate Peters, you can give people um, credit for this or that. Just don't attack people on the sidelines of it, please, for the love of God. What this do you mean? Hold on. This isn't, this what sidelines? What do you mean? Okay, well, when all of this first started up, I had I I got involved with George and was it Henman? I believe it was Henman. Mm -hmm. Sure. Over Henry. them nonstop just shitting on Crystal from on you know Peter's one of Peter's girlfriends at the time. Um, um, and and it's like, look, there's okay, sure, there's some weird shit that went on. Don't don't like go off and it start attacking her directly and calling her a slut and all this other shit, just because Peters could have lied to her too. Well, you know, here's the thing: you got two things I want to point about about this. Uh, uh, Crystal came in way after this whole thing started. She was, she, I think, uh, hooked up with Alec officially a month after they were sued. So she wasn't even involved in any of this whatsoever. But where she got into trouble, and the only times I've ever criticized her is when she's opened her big fat mouth and, and said things that were just either blatantly untrue or went on the attack against us for our criticism of Peters. But you're, I completely agree with you that the rest of that, the, the personal attacks uh, against her for the, is, is unacceptable. The problem that we've had is that we have often, Carlos, myself, Jason, I don't know if Jason specifically, but other quote unquote haters, we've gotten lumped in with that because we're the most vocal against Peters. We've gotten lumped in with the attacks. On uh, no, no, I, and I completely agree. See, when I say the people on the sidelines, I'm talking about you guys too. Because I mean, as much as as much as you are not actually involved in Peters versus CBS anything, you are out here on the sidelines doing your own thing with the here's what's going on, and you guys have been attacked for it too. Just right, don't sure. people on the fucking sidelines. Is that too much to ask? Right. For Christ's sake. Well, I think I think the issue is that there, there's. I think it's really easy to see people being on the sidelines as it kind of being a muddy situation. Um, you know, I, I intentionally don't bring up certain people because I don't think they have anything to do with it. But some of these certain people have um, decided to interject themselves into the public debate right. and do so positioning themselves as some kind of victim of a crime or some victim of like, of, you know, of, of something that is unseemly or that they really weren't the victim of. And that, I, I, that to me is extremely problematic, right? Alex isn't being stalked. Alex, Alex is being criticized publicly mm -hmm. for public actions. Oh, yeah. That's completely fair game. And right. if you're going, and, and if you're going to jump on this and say, I'm going to criticize, you know, I'm going to attack you with uh, making all kinds of really 
what, what are criminal allegations at this point because yep. of some of this happening in California or, or because of their residence in California. If you're going to jump into this with criminal allegations, um, you know, of, of stalking, cyber stalking, whatnot, at the same time, when it really is just criticism of public actions by a public individual, then you set yourself up to be a target. Is some of that targeting put the wrong direction towards things that shouldn't it be towards books, extracurricular activities? Absolutely. Those things should be off limits. But if you're going to inject yourself in the public debate, you should be prepared to be criticized publicly for that. I'm, I'm not saying I disagree. Yeah. I'm, I, uh, what, what I'm getting at is <coughs> this, like the, the, the f I don't even want to say it's fan bases, but like the fan bases on both sides going after the other side's people. It's like, don't do that. No, I the agree. Whole point is to, the whole point is you have a problem with this person or this company. State your claims and your problems with those issues and move the hell on. You don't have to engage with anybody fucking else. You don't have to. You shouldn't. Because Absolutely all you're agree. doing is you're making it worse. Absolutely agree. And it distracts. From, I think it, dis it, it it winds up distracting from right. the real issue anyway. Issues well, but what you're forgetting is sometimes that's the point. They're trying to of distract. Course, from of, the real of, issue. Course, of course, of course, of right. course. Right. And, and, and when you do things, when you engage, when behavior is engaged in this inappropriate, it, it affords them the ability to create that distraction. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. No <laughs> argument there. Um, okay. I think uh, we're, we can move on to our next. Um... <laughs> real. Uh, that's completely context it's free. It's three hours so. too late. <laughs> Benny. Benny's. <laughs> Folks at home, that was what was supposed to play right after the. <laughs> right after the uh, introduction by Ross. Um, so pretend it happened and maybe you can, you know, retroactively put it in. <laughs> and just, yeah, make, um, it, make it part of your retcon it for the headcanon of the show. And just, just, just do that. <laughs> so uh, this next item is, is a quick item, um, which I'd like to call the uh, Travis Linton uh, Memorial News Item. And that is uh, the news about uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, which became last week the most watched streaming show uh, in the world. Um, and uh, beating out, I guess, what had been the former champion, long time champion, apparently, of Stranger Things from Netflix. Uh, Disney Plus's Clone Wars um, has has moved into that, into that top slot. Um, and I, I put this, in there for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, because I'm trying to be nice to Travis, and uh, and because he put so much work into uh, you know reviewing uh, Clone Wars, and um, and clearly you know it's it has an audience out there. It's number one, but also because it seems to me like um, a show of that quality should be able to beat um, Stranger Things, given the fact that it's been you know out for more than a year. Um, so for Stranger Things to still be, you know, being talked about, this was, you know, based on period analytics, by the way, uh, for it still to be talked about so much uh, a year after its release, uh, I think is is still pretty a pretty significant win for that show. But uh, Travis, you want to weigh in on this one to start? Uh, I think it's a well deserved milestone for the show, if anything. I mean, I have been begging everybody here to watch it. Um, and I'm glad that it definitely got its audience. Like, I didn't expect this final season to limp off and fade away um, without any sort of fanfare, but um, I certainly didn't see it becoming this kind. I didn't expect it to explode like this. Um, and um, honestly, just like, I, it deserves the fanfare right now. That's all I can really say. It's well deserved and um just a very nice cherry on top of a phenomenal uh finish to the show go watch it i'm gonna keep uh, at, at, yeah at the risk of sounding like a 
like a 4-H fair, um, everyone's a winner here. Uh, both, <laughs> both Netflix's show and Disney Plus's, just because you know the staying power of Stranger Things, and of course the the really great uh, success, immediate success of uh, of Clone Wars on on Disney Plus. Other thoughts? I mean, I think that you know this is probably because of the Mandalorian. Um, you know the the news. You know, I mean, it was a really well received show. The the news that Ahsoka Tano will be in the um, season two. Um, and then, you know, wanting to know about her, you know, I, I admittedly didn't watch Clone Wars before, before the season and I've gone back and I've started watching it and because I want to know more about the character, um, that's going to, I think, hopefully play an integral role into season two of, um, um, the Mandalorian. So I think, you know, this Disney's just smart by positioning it that way. Anyone else? No, I mean, won't really... Yeah. Okay, let's go I, to our... I think, I oh, think go this ahead, is son. something that we talked about uh, quite a while ago, that it's like, we're just over the Star Wars movies. So, you know, a bunch of the people are just, just over Star Wars as a movie franchise. Well, I'm over it and so much. Ahead, having second, that universe explored in, like, other ways other than the Skywalker movie universe is something that's probably going to be gobbled up a lot more. Yeah, yeah but even the Clone Wars had ties to Skywalker because of the, you yeah, know, yeah. but I agree with you, son. I think, I think there's, you know, the ability to explore this world in more organic ways and just feature films every couple of years is, you know, is, is, is a good thing for the brand. And there's I can tell decades you- decades in between. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you that like, like I spent, one day at galaxy's edge and i you know i could do it every day for forever because it just it is so immersive and it, it is such an amazing world and and i think that like if if they can continue to capture that feel as they do these shows they'll be very successful yeah but you can't continue to, to pay those kinds of prices for smoked rack the the the, the grill the, the grill where they have all those alien meats. Oh, the Ronto right. Raptors. Go watch. Well, yeah. well, you're really paying. It's like anything at Disney. You're paying for an experience. Is what it comes down to. Right? What so, the? You know, I don't. I don't. I honestly, I, I I look at Disney. The number of times I've been there, having kids, is that look. I know what I'm going into. It's kind of like when I take all the kids to the movies. You know, I know what I'm going into with the prices. So it's you know you're paying for an experience. I I really can't you know criticize it too much yeah i mean i paid 200 dollars for a lightsaber and it may seem silly but it's it's as good as a lot of the other and you, you are know. getting your money's worth out of it i yeah. literally just, just, uh, just from its appearances on this show look how I, much we spend on toys for star trek stuff so yeah I, that's I, you know look, I, I literally just paid 300 bucks for a uh best spin dl44 blaster last yeah year. And, and I didn't I mean, think twice about the order, and I can so. tell you the, the cool thing about this isn't just that I have a cool lightsaber. It was the experience that Savi's building it. Right. Yeah. Just um, like a real Jedi. <laughs> what I wanted to say, though, is that I'm not necessarily uh, tired with the fan film, the, not fan, the films, the film franchise. I think it's just my taste, like everyone else, we have transitioned to the point where we want to see these stories played out over a series now. I think that's where we are. Um, you know, this isn't, they're making television now is, is, is all cinematic. It's all being made like feature films, just longer versions of feature films. And where that wasn't even in anyone's wheelhouse 20, 30 years ago. I mean, you could, you know, you, you couldn't imagine that 20, 30 years ago, that it would be on the level it is today. A show like The Mandalorian, for example, or a show like Star Trek Discovery or Star Trek Picard, Game of Thrones, even. I mean, you just couldn't see that happening outside of the feature film. Whereas now we expect it. So it's like, it's just, I think films themselves to us for this generation of viewers just aren't really as satisfying to us anymore as the, as what we can expect to see from a, a series. So that's where I'm at. So and you know, it's really, you know, it's a real testament to that is the Kelvin verse films. Because I've always walked out of there wanting more. Even even if, even like Into Darkness, yeah. which isn't great, right. I walked yes. out of there 
wanting more of these characters and the oh, stories to play right. out that we never yes. got. I agree. That we never I, got. I, I would agree yeah. with that. I would, seriously, I, that would, I, a Kelvin verse series would be great. I mean, it would. It would. I think it would be. It would. It would be wonderful. It would, it's also now possible. Yeah. Sure. Not with those yeah, actors, very possible. Isn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but you could still tell stories within that universe with a new cast universe, on right. a new ship. Sure. Yep. Just yep. like yep. with Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Right. Oh, so Voyager, it's all Calvin universe. <laughs> hey, actually, do Voyager rights? Yeah. Yep. So oh. I have a reset button every episode. Actually, have a story plot. Oh wow. Have have call up Ron, Ronald D. Moore and say, "Hey, <laughs> have at it, buddy." Oh, now I should having do. a good time no, on the Outlander. No. no well, no, that's, you know, this is the thing about about Ron. What I love about Ronald D. Moore is that. If you look at, for example, you look at Battlestar Galactica, you look at, well, just take a look at his work in Star Trek, then to Battlestar Galactica, then to Outlander, how different each one of those series is and how much, how they, how his work has adapted with the changing um, uh, tastes of the audience and format. So it's like, if you're going to dig up old guys from Star Trek, to work on a new Star Trek series, he's the kind of guy I'd want to see do it because he knows he's he's comfortable with adapting that style, adapting from from style to style to, to for the the generation of audience that that he's uh, dealing with. So yeah, you know what I would suggest: calling up Iris Stephen Bear and saying, "Hey, you know you're a season eight opener for DS9." Yeah, make that the season one cold open for a new Deep Space Nine set in the Kelvin universe. <laughs> oh, it should be killed off Nog. Yeah, I yeah. <clears throat> That's apples and oranges, I think. But who said hey, who said it had to be like linear? It's Deep Space Nine. The profits aren't linear. <laughs> Why? Mm, but the the audience is, unfortunately. Not necessarily. There are yeah. plenty of examples of nonlinear storytelling in television. Sure. Babylon Five. How oh, I Met Your Mother. Oh, that's someone we need. To, we should get to do a Star Trek Andromeda. series. Andromeda. I'm not a big Straczynski fan, actually. He had so. a concept. Yeah. Uh, from what from what was going around, he pitched Babylon Five to CBS before. Uh, or was it the Paramount? Paramount. Whatever. Yeah, pitch the Paramount, and then they turn around and come up with Deep Space but Nine. This is that's one of those examples of, you know, Hollywood being Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's it's an issue of that co-development you know, or parallel development. Parallel, yeah, parallel development <laughs> is what is really what that is. Even yeah, has, a... has 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 proof of the idea that it was stolen. You know, so. Yeah. Um, okay, let's veer over into our gaming section and uh, let's talk uh, about the big Nintendo uh, leak that um, that uh, came out, uh, leaks of source code and designs. Uh, Ross, you want to give us the skinny on this one? So this actually happened a couple weeks ago <laughs> and it was overshadowed by the leaks that came out of Naughty Dog over... Uh, Last of Us 2. But these leaks are pretty significant because in addition to a bunch of user data leaks, change your passwords, please. Make them complex. Make them strong. Two-factor authorization if you can. Uh, a bunch of old Nintendo information got leaked. This to include the original source code for the Nintendo 64, which, if used, could enable uh, high-fidelity N64 emulation. So you could play N64 games on your PC if you wanted to. This uh, this in and of itself led to an issue where people were thinking that something... Okay, so... Well, okay, let me, let me lay this out. Okay, so uh, Nintendo sent a cease and desist to a creator who had made an upscaled version of uh, Super Mario 64. And the leak itself, the, the leak itself dropped about five to seven days before this creator released their project. 
So a lot of people were speculating that it was because of the source code leak, and it wasn't. This person had been working on this for years, um, upscaling uh, uh, the 64 version of uh, Super Mario with uh, Unity and, and, and Unreal and all these other kinds of different things to uh, create an HD version of the game. Um, and what we got out of the... Um, the issuing of the cease and desist was also, I can't remember what it was. Leonard French did a video covering this, and he said that um, the, in the filing, because they Nintendo had also filed suit as well as uh, sending a cease and desist, um, filed a suit for possible infringement because technically they have a case, uh, and were saying that they were going to be reissuing um super mario 64 in a higher fidelity for the nintendo switch along with remastered versions of the old paper mario games in conjunction with a new paper mario game coming out on the switch which was announced last week and all of and mostly because all of this was in the legal filing a week before <laughs> yeah <laughs> now this sort of thing isn't really new for nintendo uh fan projects are always really really shaky when it comes to Nintendo properties, they guard their IP jealously. Yeah, and, yes. and it's they they come down on pretty much any projects, be it uh, Mario, Pokemon, what have you. If there are fan edits, fan games out there, they tend to shut them down as soon as they're officially released. But they don't do anything during development. So if you're out there creating something that's based on a Nintendo property. It's, there's a reason be that, careful. <laughs> there, there's a reason that Nintendo's always had that little seal on all of their games. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, okay. With Nintendo, you know, here's what kills me Nintendo. I mean, these fan games aren't really hurting them because people are still going to buy their <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's... They, they, they don't care. It's, why, not, it's, it's not about... Care. It's not about protecting their market. It's about protecting their reputation. Their, their they reputation. don't want anything out there that could be confused, right. even well, remotely confused with an official it's Nintendo not even product. Just, well, it's, here's it's the not deal. Even like, that. This goes back to like my complaints about other content as well. Like we live in a digital age where really this, Nintendo could feasibly give us the ability to play all of their legacy games in a way that would be that would be a good experience, right? Um, that, you know, and, and we saw this, we saw this with the classic NES console. We saw this with the really, the, the SNES console, but they don't, they choose not to. They re-released GoldenEye with Daniel Craig and not um, Pierce Brosnan, right? For, for the Wii. Like it's, it's, you know, people want to play these <laughs> legacy games. And if you're not going to make it available, they're going to turn to the black market to, to get their itch scratched. And that's what it is. And so it's, it's Nintendo's own fault. By not making yeah, but, the content available. But you, you also have to realize what Nintendo is doing is, I mean, let's be completely honest, this is the exact same thing Disney does. There's a reason the Disney vault exists. Mm -hmm. That's the, It's the exact it's same thing. Cool. And it's not it's not just because Disney, or, or Disney, well, Disney it, as well, but it's not just Nintendo wants to protect its reputation. That's because in all of, in both, in, in both situations of, of copyright in, in Japan and here in the US, Nintendo has sole discretion of what it wants to release and on what platform it wants to release. Yeah, there are, but there are it, groups of fans to... who are clamoring for certain games that are only available in Japan and that Nintendo just doesn't want to release in the US. Uh, Mother 2, for example. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure the Disney Vault comparison flies anymore just because Disney doesn't have his fault anymore. I mean, babies basically put everything on Disney Plus, except Song, Song, of, the Song of the South. I mean, they don't... Right, but it, but they're not. The idea that Sun is talking about is that you keep these things in a vault because you want to re-release them later for a whole new generation, right. a whole Pent new up round demand of, and things of, like that. Of monetization. Disney That's not why they're holding back Song of the South. Right. No, well, I'm yeah. not. I'm not talking about Song of the South. With I'm not either. I'm with talking the, about exactly what you're talking here. about, which is the idea that you're holding back content in order to be able to monetize it later at your you know at a time and place of your choosing um and I, I think disney has realized that in a digital era that doesn't fly anymore and um you know so 
they've wised up to to that reality and it's wasn't a question it, of whether Nin- nintendo is going to w- wasn't it disney who started pulling a whole bunch of stuff that they'd acquired from fox from uh, uh wasn't it alamo roadhouse saying that disney had pulled the ability to take some of the films yeah uh rocky show? horror picture show princess bride a couple of the other really big uh, cult films, they pulled permissions from a lot of theaters who do regular right. showings of these films. So essentially, they were putting some some of those some of those properties in the vault. Well, I think the idea was that they were gonna they wanted to license them differently, not right. to hide them. So so it's not in a vault. Well, one of the biggest things that came out of these leaks were log files that go into in-depth description of their hardware, one of the, uh, for everything from the Super Nintendo all the way through the Wii. Hmm. So a lot of very interesting technical information, both software on, and hardware for almost the entire history of Nintendo is now out on the web for people to see. Now Nintendo has of course tried to shut down everything they can, but this is the internet and it's out there. Oh, here's a question. I mean, these I've seen enough videos. This one, this is one guy that does video games he, he, and video game consoles and things like that. He's in the UK, and I really, I really don't want him to be boring as hell. But it's like getting a, it's, it's like being in class because he breaks down all these video game systems, every little minor technical dude. It's like he's reverse engineering them, telling you exactly doing breakdowns, yeah, yeah, like taking you, it apart. It's, it's, Oh yeah, I tell oh, you exactly, I know what you're talking about then, yeah. T- telling you exactly how these games are, uh, these systems were made, how they were designed, the development, the whole cycle of this. So my question is, what does Nintendo care about that when that shit's already out there that anybody with, with some knowledge in this can just revert, reverse engineer it and tell you exactly what's going on with these? With it's these, the uh, precedent. If, okay. it, if it's out there, they want to show that they are protecting it or they're trying to protect it legally so that they have a case later on if they have to bring uh, government or legal systems into it. Okay, now, so why, why are they so mad about, okay, so, all right, now I'm not why they're so mad, but okay, so they, they've got this kid, guy that's, now he's done this high-res version of, what game was it now? What, uh, Mario, 64. Mario 64. Mario 64, okay. So he's done this Mario 64 high-res version, okay. And they got to see stuff. Again, this is like, I mean, this is not the first time this has happened, okay? By Ezra's measure. And I think there's a lot to be said about that, you know, if when you're dealing in an, in an era of the internet when everything is ones and zeros, I mean, to an extent, you got to understand that if, if you're, like you guys said, if you're not putting this out, that somebody's going to do it. They're, somebody's going to beat you for punch on this. I mean, I get, I understand that Nintendo is like Disney in that they are r- religious about defending their IP. But, you know, you after this guy is done, there's going to be somebody else out there to do it. it, it it's the only point I make. I'm not saying they should stop. I'm just making that observation. They have to They'll serve the them C- C&Ds too. Yep. They have to, they have to adapt the marketplace and the marketplace, I mean, it's, it's Snapster. Same thing, Snapster. And forcing forcing big Napster. corporations to adapt to technology, right? And that's exactly what happened with Napster. Napster, you know, it, it, it came, it, it turned basically into a, a pay for play scheme, and it, it's the it, it turned into now what Spotify is and what the other music services up there are, and you know, and that's because the consumers said, you know, hey, we're more than willing to pay for this shit, but you you got to have it out there for us to do it. So right. I, I agree with you on that, Jason. That you know, I think a lot of these companies are they, they take this position that they're going to control the, their 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 product to when and completely ignoring their consumer base. You know, uh, it's it's an interesting parallel you're drawing with the music industry, though, because. Um, arguably uh, the shift away from uh, the music, you know, the, the record labels and um, album based sales and all of that, which um, obviously was very lucrative for the, for the labels, but was also pretty lucrative for the 
for the artists. Whereas today, you know, what we have with Spotify and iTunes and a, you know, per song purchase rather than per album purchase uh, model uh, has arguably been terrible for artists who are making less money than ever before, uh, except for a small few um, who can command that kind of audience. But for for most other audience or most other artists, uh, especially at the mid mid tier level, um, the transition economically has not been a good one for them. Well, it's also about the show, right? I mean, you can argue that musicians have never. Been, it's never been very profitable to to record a record a record and sell records for for musicians for musicians yeah right it's always been about the show the the record is just a way to promote the next show yeah concerts concerts were right. where were where artists really <clears throat> made money yeah by the way the uh, the guy the channel I was referring to where the guy does all the breakdowns of these systems and, and the history behind them and the technology in them a modern vintage gamer that's the guy. So maybe that's the second channel off. I mean, it's like this is the problem I have with this channel. It's just like it's it's very interesting, but it's like a science class. It's just very dry. It's like you have to be it. interested in that that kind of thing to really enjoy it. Yeah, and I am interested. That's the thing. I am, but the, but his presentation is so technical that it just loses me after a while. God. It's like the old guy who's introducing the dinosaurs in Mrs. Doubtfire. Prime <laughs> <laughs> example. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, interested yeah, in dinosaurs, yeah. but oh my God, could this guy be any more old? Yeah, I mean, seriously, it's like, how do you think the, the, the one thing that universally is agreed on by all kids is the greatest thing ever and make it fucking boring? And he did that. <laughs> the dinosaurs, yeah. Yeah. Which makes him a great actor. Let me see. <laughs> If you ever talk to a kid, ever, any, any kid, I don't care who you are, ask a kid what they think about dinosaurs, and you're going to get that response right there. Thumbs up. Kids love dinosaurs. Doesn't matter. Hell yeah. I love okay. dinosaurs. Great. Everybody love loves dinosaurs. This is sort of like, you know, mom, apple, pie, and Chevrolet. Hell yeah. <laughs> and dinosaurs. Complain. And dinosaurs, right. Jurassic Park. Best uh, Ross, you want to wind us up on this one? Is this the beginning of things to come? Is this a, a bump in the road for Nintendo? What do you? What, it's what's a the bump in the road. It, it's it's a serious data breach. The Nintendo accounts getting leaked, especially, is a pretty bit is a pretty bad deal. But you know, like any other company that's had leaks like this before, they'll they'll recover. They'll be fine. Just um, to reset your passwords. All right, let's move to our next gaming topic. And uh, this is a follow-up to the um, introduction uh, to great fanfare uh, months ago of Google's Stadia gaming platform. Um, and uh, this writer in The Verge talks about how it hasn't really taken off the way that Google expected uh, that it would. Um, and That's that it can feel it like a be. very lonely place. So for those of you who game, uh, ha is Google Stadia paying off? Is it uh, on its on its promises? <laughs> it, was, uh, it wasn't paying uh, off on its promises uh, before it even delivered. Yeah. <laughs> like so yeah. many things from Google. <laughs> so Google Stadia is a gaming streaming platform where you you buy games, and you can play them immediately through a Chrome browser or other extensions, uh, be it on a TV, on a, on a tablet, or your PC. And unlike other services like, say, no. Steam? Xbox Beta. Apple Arcade. Okay, there's the Apple Arcade, there's Xbox Live, there's um, PlayStation Now. It's a it's a whole it's a brand new marketplace for you to buy and play games. And the appeal is that you don't have to install anything. You don't need crazy expensive hardware in order to play new games. The problem with that is you're going to have to rebuild your library all over again. So if you want to play a game, you got to buy it. There are free games that are offered by Google Play by uh, Stadia. But with the exception of Destiny 2, there aren't any standouts in that list. Um, they're mostly older games like the a couple of the Tomb Ra the recent Tomb Raider titles. But as far as big draws, big titles to really bring people in, Destiny is really 
it's and it's already for free on s several Every different platform. other platforms. Yeah. Question, I have, the... question I have for this. So is this basically because I don't under I this is honestly God, it, this is the first time I've heard of this in Google Stadia. This and that's one of their problems. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean and 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 but and, and that may be because I am exclusively now a console gamer. I don't do any PC gaming anymore. I just don't because that and it's very simple. The reason for that is that I it's just it, it requires too much of an investment. Consoles are very quick and easy and convenient. Um, but so my question is on this, the reason you don't have to upgrade your hardware or do anything like that, I'm assuming it's because everything is cloud-based. Is that yes. why you're, yeah. you're, you're, using, you're using their servers to yes. play, to actually yeah. play? Well, that again, that makes sense in theory, but you got to have a catalog to be able to do that. You know, this is the thing... You got to have a catalog and a stable internet connection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so here's my outside looking in. First time I'm hearing about this, that you know, the difference between this and an Xbox Live uh, or, or Game Pass or PlayStation Now, the difference between this and that type is that those ecosystems already have all that built into them. They've already got the established panel and everything else. Um, and your your internet speed is, compared to what this would require, is quite, it's, it's much different. It's, it's in a much lower lower level than what right. you need to be effective to do this. So, you know, it, it, it seems like this would have been a better thing for Google to do had they partnered with a Microsoft or a Sony in order to get this going is my my my, my uh, initial, initial uh, gut reaction honestly you need a gigabit internet connection just to stream games well uh, like playstation now is a great platform but if you don't have a good staple internet connection it's not going to be fun again? but xbox you need at least a gigabyte connection i mean this for stable is yeah, because it gets sluggish, you get hang-ups, it will freeze on you. Um, I mean, but Xbox Live, there's a difference between Xbox Live and all these other streaming platforms. Xbox Live installs the game onto your device. Right, exactly. So if you have, and you have a physical copy where you're not streaming, but, I mean, they... I do stuff all the time. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that see, this is the thing. I, I, never, I never got PSL, so I didn't realize that that's cloud-based as well. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, okay. It's basically Netflix for PlayStation. Uh -oh. okay. but, see, but see, here's the here's the big issue in, in all of this, uh, is is when what, 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 the, what we're talking about right now is what I was talking about when all of the uh, platform wars with us talking about CBS and NBC and all that stuff. This is that in the gaming space. This is literally that in the gaming space. This is Google trying to break into their own platform for gaming and falling horribly flat because their ideas were high and mighty on an entire nation that isn't every that isn't Los Angeles and everybody has fiber yet. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there's still there's use... still portions of the country that use dial-up or, D or dsl yeah around yeah. here oh dude i my, like I, I i said before that the the greatest the, the greatest boom to my business during the first uh, two weeks of the pandemic the lockdown was all the dsl connections i was doing on at, in, a, in a apartments in uh in a page to go weekly places i was doing making bank on those and dsl because that's all the property can get because they they don't they don't they can't get the, uh, the, the um, service from the cable companies in the units. So yeah, I mean, there's plenty of people still on DSL. But I think the bigger problem with this is that Google is once again getting themselves into the, a business that they have absolutely zero experience in. Well, and at a steep price. Um, I mean, I see a, I see a real parallel here uh, between uh, Stadia and Google Glass. I mean, Google Glass oh, was was a fantastic idea, but the their price point for entry at just a beta level was super high well, for these bucks, things. Fifteen hundred, I think. Um, and Stadia similarly has you you pay one hundred and twenty nine dollars 
just to gain access to it. And, and then on top of that, that, a ten dollar a month subscription. Well, that's fee. the the founders fee. That's the the the. You can get you can fee. get Stadia with just the uh the the twelve dollar a month. The 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 big price point that's for your the controller and the the fire stick or not the fire stick the the chrome stick chrome whatever you is. need to plug into your tv if you're just doing it on a on a, a, a web browser you you just need the the flat subscription fee but, and it know, should be noted that um google's actually getting pretty desperate to draw in more and more people because they're starting to give away all these promotions like oh here's three months of uh stadia I can't remember the exact subscription for it, but like we will give it to you for this amount of time. Check yeah, they, like they sent that to me a couple weeks ago. But see, yeah. there's 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 another problem with all of this. The the big uh, aside from aside from the connection issue, the people who did actually have the connection to to stabilize playing on a Stadia. Google marketed the fact these games would be in 4K HD, mm -hmm. and some of them at best are at, uh, at 1040. It also doesn't help that they really don't have a lot of support among the big publishers. They they got yeah. Destiny, but that's because uh, Bungie is is on its own now. Uh, well, kind of well, with support of Tencent, but the uh, the big publishers they aren't really going for. For Stadia, you're not going to see. Gonna, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the contrarian here. I think, I think they are working to disrupt the market, and I think that they are um, just at this very early, early disruption, you know, pre-disruption phase. Um, and the sooner, um, or 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 over time, you're going to see other companies adopt this kind of delivery model. Well, uh, and yeah. that could happen, but I think the key that word is, is delivery. Yeah. That is happening. Is Microsoft delivery, though. partnered with, um, I forget who, another big tech company, to do something like this for Xbox and, uh, on both console and PC. So this is happening. These things have happened, yeah. are happening now, and it's happened before. I can't remember the name of the, the company that came before, but there was a game streaming service that tried and failed in the last decade. Gamefly? I think Gamefly. No, not Gamefly. It was something else. Gamefly is still around. They're still delivering games to people by mail. And I think. Gamefly I think. The, and I think. The, and I think the publishers are just again holding on to this old model of content delivery. And I think that the the, the quicker they adopt, I mean, you know, I mean, Google would be smart to go out and get some good solid partnerships like EA and things like that. And I mean, I'm sure that they're, that that's in the works. Um, EA is doing know, its own thing. Yeah, it is definitely their, their own shit going on. Yep. And, you know, I, this is the thing though. This is where the 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 problem. This is kind of like the Wii U problem, okay? Where they come out with this system that has nothing of what anybody wants on it, yet, and they can't, and they couldn't, and they 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 couldn't get the support from third party developers. For, for it in time for launch. In fact, they had they were losing them. And the ones that they had initially dedicated, they lost. But you know, you can't. I, I just don't see how you can jump into this without having the third party developer support and word off the bat. Well, that's why yeah. I say this is the this is the platform wars. Just because like every other third party studio has their own gaming platform at this point. Ubisoft has UPlay. EA has Origin. Uh, St uh, Steam is uh, Valve's. Uh, and then we, we just saw the Epic, Epic Game break. Store. Epic broke into the market by undercutting Steam. Like, and they're doing very well with it, too. Exactly. And now you have Google who wants to jump into this space by itself. With nothing. Right, exactly. With, with, with absolutely nothing. Right. Other exactly. than this, this idea... And let's be honest, it's a it's a it's a Hideo Kojima kind of idea of, <laughs> hey, here's a thing that you can do, and then not really honestly deliver on it. 
I take I take so, I, I do want to take something back real quick. There are some big names on the platform: Red Dead Redemption Two, Borderlands Three, Doom Eternal. The problem is these games are all these are all digital games, but they're at full price. They're the same amount of money you'd spend on a, a box at a GameStop. Yeah. Right, so, but are you looking? Are, do you, do you have do you have a membership, Ross? Or are you just looking? Because I'm I just signed up, and yeah, I can get Red Redemption Two. What yeah. is it if I had a membership? Is it less or is it the same price? It's the same. There are some games that are discounted. Uh, I got a, a promotional uh, membership, but uh, I, I, with the a few exceptions, uh, the games are are all the same. I don't think there's any. I don't see any discount. There are a few discounts. But it looks like that's for mostly uh, DLC type stuff. Doom sixty four is seven ninety nine. Yeah, but it's it's about that. Well, I see it for four ninety nine. Oh, four ninety nine. But th that's the same price it is across all platforms. So there's no real. Yeah, but if incentive I'm not installing to... software, but if I'm not installing it, right? So like like we're. I mean, my my new laptop has you know I think two hundred fifty six gigs of RAM. Or a gigs hard drive. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I can get a game and not have to install it and it play comparable, I mean, I you know, like I said, like I said, the idea is there. the the uh, The idea is, hey, here's a game that is preloaded. You purchase access to the game so that you so that it's basically a check mark in your library to say you have access to play this game on our servers. The problem is the connection to the server and them marketing that it's supposed to be at a higher frame rate and a higher fidelity than it actually is. Hey, uh, Jason, you just got you an Xbox, didn't you? I did. Um, Red Dead should be on Game Pass. It is. I saw it. I got. I signed up for Game Pass uh, last night so we could play um, Battlefront. Oh, uh, get a uh, Mech Five. Or oh, yeah. Gears. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mech and, Gears. And one of the things that other marketplaces are doing, uh, Epic Games Store is, is, re is giving out free games on a regular basis yeah. to, for, for no other cost. For, for things like Xbox Live Gold, they have incentives to subscribe to Gold. And then, of course, you've got Game Pass, which you subscribe and you get a library of games for free. Stadia has some free games, but... They're all indies and older games with the exception of Destiny. But you still have to buy the DLCs for Destiny. All right, so, the, so the return uh, let's weigh in. Is Google okay. Stadia going to make it, or is it going to break I don't think so. It? I have a feeling, the, and the writing's on the wall. The writing is on the wall. We got our new glass hole here is what we got. <laughs> yeah, I, I still love that, that, that uh, a product was so reviled and, the, and its users were so reviled that they came up with the term glass hole for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's early. I mean, I was an early detractor of Google Docs and Google, you know, the Google Office Suites. And I, I'm like, why would you even do that? I mean, I, I didn't get it. And I think I learned my lesson. I think, you know, I'm willing, I, I'm willing to give this a shot and say, you know, I bet you know, I bet that the, over time, if they stick with it, it's Google. People will find value and people will, will start to use I don't it know. again. Google has had re a lot of uh, really great ideas that they badly executed or badly marketed or just decided they didn't want to do anymore. Uh, and that's a big reason why a lot of people don't jump in with both feet with a lot of Google products because Google Plus, Google Hangouts, Google Plus, Hangouts, um, <laughs> Google, what was that one? Uh, I actually used it for a while. Um, Google Glass. Um, Google's a big no, enough was company. It, a, that... it was a collaboration, a piece of collaboration software, and <laughs> it was a great concept, but they never really fully invested in it. And um, it's back now, and it's um, it's called it's... Google Talk, Google. Yeah, no, Google. No, Google, Google Meet. Phone. Google Meet. <laughs> Google Meet. <laughs> Meet yeah. Google's a big enough yeah. company that they can throw a ton of money at something and compl and have it be a complete failure, and then not feel it on their bottom line. Not to yeah, I mean that's true, but way. at the same time, it will never make them another Apple or another Microsoft. Um, well, they don't need to. Those They're already Google. Well, yes and no. I mean, if then then they should be Google. They shouldn't be trying to be Apple or Microsoft. But that's it. They um, are being Google by just throwing money at something and seeing if it works. That's not really a great sustainable business model. Um, it's worked for them so far. Uh, I've been saying, they, there are plenty. It, it is a uh, it is a, uh, an idol with clay feet um, because it's it's uh, 
it's not totally sustainable. I mean, the, the way Google makes its money is not as secure as, as it was 10 years ago. Right. Uh, so they can't count on that always being there to prop them up when they make bad missteps. And um, YouTube you know, isn't much help either. <laughs> what's that? Also, YouTube isn't much help either. It also doesn't oh, help yeah. that, the, um, that the, uh, the Copyright Office released their report of Google possibly breaking DMCA. Yeah, I saw that uh, late late posting. Um, I'm, I'm putting it on for next week uh, for us to talk uh, a bit more. So let's uh, wait until yeah, then. I still got to watch the rest of that video because it yeah, was really kind of going into it, how outdated the DMCA is. Yeah, certainly stuff have stuff has changed since it was uh, since it was written. I mean, twenty years ago it's been so. That's uh, that's something more than twenty years ago. Um, so uh, so let's put that on a shelf on the shelf for next week. Um, and Justin, if you wouldn't mind posting the uh, the link to that YouTube video about the YouTube DMCA thing, that would be great. So that uh, we can get up to speed on it before um, before we talk about it next week. Um, and let's wrap up with our final uh, topic of the evening, and that is, what are we watching? Everyone's so who, favorite segments. Everyone's favorite segment. Ross, I know you're excited about this one, so you get to go first. Well, uh, there's been an evolution in the Cars with Faces saga. Uh, in in <laughs> browsing, with faces? No, no. In, in browsing uh, Netflix, uh, James came across Transformers Rescue Bots. Oh, so he's he's, he's yes. upgrading to Transformers, and I couldn't be happier. It's it's a surprisingly engaging show, and I found myself enjoying it as much as he was. And they have really cool toys. That they do. That they do. So now, so now it's something you can actually enjoy and don't feel creeped out by. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Transformers are are a bit easier to stomach than cars with faces, buses with faces, construction equipment with faces. If anyone out there is an artist, we should make Ross. A car with face. A car oh, with a God. face. Uh, no, Sean, fire no. up the Photoshop. No, no. If we're making Ross anything, it's a it's a naval ship with a face. I'll tell you what. Here's Submarine the with a face. Here's the thing. I will have my daughter on her on her computer sketch do a sketch of you in the form of a. Uh, how about an aircraft carrier with your face on it? How about oh, that? Oh God, no! In, in the car side, <laughs> he wants a submarine. Submarine? You want a submarine? I'll I, I, I submarine. would never. It, uh, it that was my one hard limit for my entire naval career: no carriers. For okay. the love of God, wow. please, no a carriers. Yellow submarine. A you yellow wanna, submarine. You want a sub? You want to make you a sub? I'll have her make you a sub. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, right. And uh, I actually got to, uh, uh, bleh, I got to see something I've been really looking forward to. The Black Pants Legion released their latest Text Talks Battletech, an epic two-hour lore video of a primer on the clans, probably one of the most popular elements of the Battletech universe. It was it was such a wonderful watch, despite it being so long. It was engaging. It was fun. Beautiful scoring, excellent voiceover, and a lot of little fun nods and cameos from different people in the community. Cool. All right, who's next? Uh, Travis, what have you been watching this weekend or this week? Um, not a whole lot. I've been hopscotching around Star Trek again with uh, the countdown I've been doing. Um, I did put on a couple episodes of King of the Hill. Um, just oh, an lunch. oldie but goodie. Um, oldie but goodie, product of you a say time. King of the Hill? I'll tell yeah. you yeah. what. Propane and propane accessories. Okay, I'm the creator of The Office and Parks and Rec. That's right. And That's right. Upload. He's brilliant. Travis, I want to say this. I don't want to cut you off here, but I have to point this out. King of the Hill is my favorite animated series of all time. So It's, it's fantastic. It's well, so good. It's so it. underrated. Yep. Um, Carry I'm on. I'm telling you, propane and propane accessories. I've seen sales today. Like, like, on a scale of one to ten, how do you trust your government? Dale Gribble. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, that's, that's about me but um <laughs> it, i guess the most interesting thing i have been watching um at least on a personal level is um on youtube 
the channel SB Nation, I think that's what they're called, they actually released a six-part documentary on the history of the Seattle Mariners, which is, of course, oh. my favorite football team. Sure. And, wow. Uh, a really you're not a rockies huge. fan um i have grown up a seattle mariners fan and have like i like the rockies i've gone to the rockies i was actually very much looking forward to this season with the rockies because i had bought tickets to um go see larry walker's number retired and unfortunately that's no longer happening and i'm really bummed out uh, bummed out about it but down in my heart, I am still for the I'm still for the Mariners. I was I have been pulling for them every single year, and I was absolutely ecstatic when Edgar was inducted into the Hall of Fame because he is my favorite Mariner. And uh, <laughs> well, SB Nation put out a six part documentary on the history of the Seattle Mariners, and not only is it really well constructed, it's actually really interesting. I see a lot of comments on these six videos that um from people who aren't even seattle mariners fans like this has just been incredible like just if you're a baseball fan sean go check it out like, i'm excited I'm, I'm 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 looking forward now sp nation puts up great videos they always have so that, that I, this i'm really excited, looking forward to seeing this this will be great yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not loud. now you listen to me mister I work for a living, and I mean real work, not writing down gobbledygook. <laughs> <laughs> gobbledygook. Propane, right acce down, gobbledygook Propane accessories. You know, what's funny about Hank Hill is that my, my impression of Hank Hill is identical to my impression of Dr. Phil. It's the same thing. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with that boy? That boy ain't, he ain't right. right. He ain't right. <laughs> I, I had sex. What? All, all of the characters in that show. Oh, well, congratulations, Travis! <laughs> all the characters on like, that show were it, brilliant. It just it like brilliantly I just drawn. Tried to do a Doctor Phil impression, and I just came out with half a sentence. I just blacked out for the rest. <laughs> I have a no oh. urethra. Anyway, <laughs> oh, that's right. I have a no urethra. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to do a rewatch. We're here. I, no rear. Like, Get I, used I, to it. A gold <laughs> moment for you all there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's all Thank good. you, Travis. You, you made the show. Uh, okay. Uh, son, what have you been watching this week? Okay. So I fell into a hole on YouTube. Uh, a, a channel called Triangle City has... Uh, been for years at this point actually covering uh the cut content and interviews with the developers of fallout new vegas Ooh. and every once in a while he'll upload a new video covering things like the cut content from the different sections and segments of the game or the different factions along with uploading uh interviews that he's done with the developers over time constraints and what went into like level design or sound creation or different aspects of the game. So that's been a fun little journey that I've taken this week. Uh, Netflix came back into my life this week Whoa. with the uploading of season six of The Flash. Mm -hmm. So I watched episode one and immediately I know they've spent all of their budget <laughs> <laughs> because Queen the first episode of The Flash is Flash from Queen. There you go. They, yeah, they, so, so the first episode of this new season is Barry going into a black hole, and when he's doing it, is Queen's Flash playing. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, no, they, they, they usually do this once every season in the flash. There's this great big song number that you know a lot of money went into, and here it is in the first episode. And it's like, wow, okay, well, you know, there's not going to be any more season after this, <laughs> which <laughs> is what happened. Um, uh, <coughs> also, I've been watching the new series for Ghosts in the Shell. 
uh, they have uh, the standalone complex has been kind of this prime timeline for Ghost in the Shell, and uh, after second gig uh, Section Nine was disbanded, uh, this takes place a couple of years after that, and uh, basically it, it's not it's not 2D with 3D animation mixed in anymore. It's all 3D at this point, so it does take some getting used to but it kind of has this Borderlands art style feel to it. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it you, you just flow with it. But it runs along this premise that in their universe, the American empire basically created sustainable war as an economy. So and, Metal Gear uh, Solid 4? Something like that, yeah. And, they're, and by disbanded, she means the government sent the kill squad in. The, <laughs> something like that um and at the at, at at the end of this we start realizing uh that there are uh because of because of the advanced technology where people's brains are literally computers at this point uh we now have super processor humans who are what they call post human which I mean, they're able to process thousands and billions of times more than even the most advanced person with a cyber brain ever. And it's made them go a little crazy. So yeah, that's, that's, I've, I can't believe I actually watched all 12 episodes of the season in the past week. Nice. <laughs> but Whoa. I did. Just and, on another note, and as a follow-up to uh, our earlier coverage, uh, a, f a few months back uh, about the death of Logan Williams, the young actor who played young um, uh, Barry. Barry Allen on The Flash. Uh -huh. um, he, he died, um, as you may recall, and uh, it was only this week that the cause of his death was revealed. And it turns out that the 16-year-old actor uh, overdosed on fentanyl, to which he was addicted. Oh. And um, I read that this week, and I was, it just, my heart sank because I've ranted on this show before about how criminally I believe Hollywood treats young actors, uh, gives them no guidance, no support. Um, it thrusts them into this incredibly stressful, uh, high pressure world and makes them all too susceptible to alcohol, drugs, etc. And this kid was 16 and he his addiction to this, he'd been addicted to it for three years. So since oh he was God. 13 years old, which just blew my mind. Um, it's really sad. I'm glad his mother is talking about it publicly because it's, you know, it's a cautionary tale, but it just, uh, it was just, it presses one of my buttons about how young actors are, are treated and then behave um, in, in, uh, in Hollywood. So that was just a quick little follow up there for you. That's um, terrible. Yeah, it was, it was horrible. Really sad. Um, okay, uh, back to you, Justin. Uh, what were you watching this weekend? Well, um, this weekend? son, I started catching up on The Flash, uh, seeing that they finally dropped the rest of the season on Netflix, so I wanted to check that out. Be caught up. Um, still in the middle of my Trek rewatch. I'm on Voyager right now, but I really haven't watched the whole lot because we're busy, as you know, moving. So, um, hopefully, over the course of next week, I'll get back to watching more stuff. All right, excellent. And uh, Jason, how about you? So, as was previously mentioned, I bought an Xbox earlier this week. <laughs> that, so, that explains everything? Yep. So, I got um, Jedi Fallen Order. So, I've actually been playing Jedi Fallen Order quite a bit. Well, I and here's that early. Oh. What's that? I said I just I actually ironically started uh, playing that again tonight as well. And here's the cool thing about um, about the game is that, let me share my screen here. You can actually, you know, you can customize your lightsaber. And this is actually a lot of the parts that I have in for my Savi's lightsaber. Oh, yeah. That I'm able to play with. I recognize the hilt. Very yep. cool. So that's really kind of cool. So I, I've really, I mean, I've really enjoyed playing that. My kid's playing it with me and here he comes down, he watches me play and he complains that I let him play. Um, <laughs> and then we started playing Battlefront 2 together. Um, the other thing, um, I did get HBO, uh, you know, in, in preparation for HBO Max, and we've been watching, um, the wife and I have been watching Chernobyl. Oh, great Ooh. show. Which Love was that. incredible, but 
extremely 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 just bizarre watching it in the middle of the covid pandemic yeah it Ooh. takes on oh, yeah. a greater poignancy um yeah. with the trump administration um well you know i mean even beyond just the 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 national politics the personal politics of you know the, the tension that exists between collectivism versus individualism and and rights and versus you know responsibility so it's been it's been very surreal like you know i'm well and also the sacrifice like the 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 part that really got me was all of those miners that volunteered basically i mean they were sort of forced to show up but they willingly ultimately went into uh you know i, I don't know if you've gotten to that episode yet have you no, I have I, I have we're oh, okay just finished episode four i think so we just have one more episode left yeah oh, man. Well, where, where if they hadn't made that sacrifice it would have completely melted down and it would have been a horrible, horrible uh, environmental disaster way beyond what, what it actually ended up being. And um, th- those were just, you know, people, you know, uh, who realized yeah. that they were the only ones who could essentially save the world. Right. And I mean, the nice thing is that in that, in that scene, we see them volunteer, you know, it's, they would have been forced, right? We, I mean, this is Soviet Union, let's, let's be real. Um, if they hadn't volunteered, they would have been marched with guns. But they, um, but they did volunteer, and so I mean, it's, it, it it goes to show you that, you know, even in a world where, uh, even when you do have um, collective responsibility, you know, maybe force isn't the best way to get that. You know, it just it's just been very surreal with everything going on. Kind of reminds me of the uh, Fukushima meltdown. Uh, a bunch of the older citizens in the Fukushima area volunteered to start. Right. Uh, taking over the uh, cementing operations of the Fukushima plant. So right, because they were already they, of advanced age. Right. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay, Sean Boy, okay. you get to wind us up here. Well, I, uh, I've been watching, I watched a series that popped up on Netflix last week. I think it's a limited series called White Lines. Um, and it's, it's kind of weird because I... I I, I watched the first couple of episodes going, this is really good. And I looked into the the, uh, the Metacritic ratings on it. It's like a 49. I'm like, well, I don't understand. Why is this getting so poorly reviewed? And then you get to the middle of it, and it just drags on. And then you get to the end of it, and you just hate everybody. But overall, it was it was relatively relatively enjoyable series. It gets very convoluted, and it's kind of like you point where you don't know where the creators were going with this what they it's like they had an idea and then they just went off in a bunch of different tangents but it's from the oh, i got I'm a, i got wind here sorry about that um i got it's from the alex pina the same guy who did money heist on a, a netflix which is a very, very popular series it's like in its third se- the season i think um so sell that and as i was explaining on the on the group that you know, I miss the office and I decided to jump into Parks and Rec because I, I know it's from the same, the same, you know, it's the same style as Joe and from the same people. And I'm really, I really fall in love with Parks and Recreation. I love the show. It it's reminds, a great show. I can't really, do it late also. It, it, it reminds me, it's, of course, it, it does remind you of The Office, but I, what I've noticed about this is that whereas The Office really it relied a lot of, on cringe humor, this does not. The Parks and Rec is, is much more upbeat, okay, it, than than The Office was, and it's like it, it's nobody being particularly nasty to anyone except for Jerry, because you got to be nasty to Jerry. That's just a rule on that show. And, <laughs> and Ben, when he starts talking about little Sebastian, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I still don't get it. <laughs> you never will. Shut ben. up, Wyatt. <laughs> But uh, no, I really fall in love with uh, with that. And also, I pointed out this too in the uh, in the episode, uh, the first um, Ron and Ta- uh, Ron and Tammy episode, Ron and Tammy one, where the, the there's a scene where they they're in a diner and they, they they start basically having a fist fight, and then they start then they then it cuts to them making out on the on the on the di- diner table, and then they 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 race to a motel. The motel they race to is. The uh, Hotel uh, Glen Capri, Motel Glen Capri, which is where I stayed in Glendale for the uh, Star Trek Picard premiere. 
So, <laughs> the exact same motel. So I thought that was funny. Um, but now I just got in the mail, and I'm going to start this up. Uh, I just got the Blu-ray copy of V, The Final Battle. So I'm looking oh to watch God. the original V series. On oh Blu-ray. my God, the uh, cheesiness! Oh, dude, are you kidding me? The original V series, uh, V miniseries, were fantastic. Why do you think so many people believe there are lizard people on Earth? Exactly, because of, <laughs> of Hillary uh, Clinton. Now, now here's a question I have for you. I just found out that the entire s- series of Knight Rider is available on Blu-ray, and oh, I mean. And I need to, I need oh to my either God. hold myself back from ordering it, or I need to be pushed. It was it, not it, that good a show. No, Come no, on. You, uh, what? <laughs> Sean, you need to get that. You need that in your collection. <laughs> Me, my, dude, I only need one Hayden, positive vote, and I got it. Hayden <laughs> will love it. <laughs> he already you. did. I showed it's him a clip harsh. from it. He, he said, "He goes, what is this? This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen." Yeah, for an eight-year-old, guys. <laughs> No. Exactly. It's a and car that, told, all, hey, that lives there. in all of our hearts. Sean, whatever hey, you do. Hey, what, what did you think of, of Night Raider when I showed it to you? It was good. It was good. Uh, okay. Sean, <laughs> just do not do the modern reboot. Well, whatever it was. What was it? Oh, no, no. Night Raider 2000? No, Night Raider 2000. <laughs> no, no. Just stay away. You're doing yourself oh. a favor. Uh, but before we before we move on to you, Carlos, uh, if you are interested in Altered Carbon, Altered Carbon has a has a anime movie called Altered Carbon Resleeved on Netflix. Really? Hey, has anybody watched mm-hmm. Altered Carbon season two yet? By the way, I'm I haven't this. watched it yet. I no, I gotta jump into that too. Um. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, the Matrix. It had a remember a bunch of those shorts that right. uh, that it released animated shorts. Oh, uh, the the Animatrix. Those were those yeah. Were awesome. Animatrix. That's right. Are we getting Are we getting the Umbrella Academy next month? Is that when it's coming? Uh, I I don't think they've uh, released. I think you're thinking of the boy. Well, no, 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 no. We got we got a, a date for Umbrella Academy season two. Hold on. We do. Oh crap! I thought you guys knew. I'm sorry. Hold no, on. no. Yeah, it's that's coming out breaking soon. news. I posted it in chat. Yeah, that's but, how I think uh, I found out. Five days ago. <laughs> um, hang on, I've got it right now on deadline. Um, I'll just screen share it and deadline and July thirty first. Oh wow! Okay, great. Awesome. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. So it's two months away. All right. Well, it'll be here before we know it. <laughs> I so I just want to get on a train and go somewhere. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. Uh, I'll come down and visit you, Sean. Works for me. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So um, I can't really report much of anything that I mean. I did watch some stuff, but none of it was genre stuff. I, you know, it was like mushy drama things uh i'm finishing uh normal people on hulu i'm uh uh what else did i watch um uh defending jacob on apple tv plus um yeah but nothing uh well i watched another episode of upload that that would probably be my only my only thing for this week but next week by next week i will uh uh, i will have i'm gonna do my the stars trial um so i can catch up on the recently concluded season of Outlander, which I'm a big fan of. I just wish there was more to uh, the, the 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 Frankenstein Chronicles. Honestly, hmm. was it good? Yeah, I mean it was a BBC show. Right, it was made you know made over in the UK and brought here to the US. Hey, did anybody so watch like... Dracula? By the way, the no. Okay. Anybody have any desire to watch Dracula? No. Um, okay. which, which Dracula? Stephen Stephen Moffat did, the, did Dracula. Did, it, it, isn't, it, isn't it his? The the Netflix one? Yeah, it's not Netflix. It's a BBC show, but it's it that just happens to have Netflix label slapped on it. Yeah. I I see it right here. I I I've seen it a couple of times on my things. Like hmm. I'm not really interested, but. You guys might. Hey, yeah, Mark uh, Stephen Moffat created it. So, uh, I mean, that's so an emotionally dra- uh, damaged Dracula trying to make his way in the world. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay. 
works for me. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, folks at home. We'll be back next week, of course, with uh, another incisive look at the week's genre news and, of course, our own scintillating opinions. opinions. <laughs> mm -hmm. So thanks to everyone, uh, all our co-hosts who joined us today, Jason, Travis, Justin, our stalwart producer, uh, Ross, the eyebrows of doom, Sean O'Halloran, wearing pants, and son, of course, our former mascot index. Now you're just a full on, you're no longer a mascot, you're full on sun seal. I mean, like I've always, look, you can call me index all you want. It doesn't not make me the contrarian. Well, <laughs> we count on that. That's what we hope for. That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're your fans. We're hey, your biggest fans. We all have roles to play. That's right. I mean, <laughs> that we do. Really, Thank you, you eyebrows of doom. If you were really my fans, you would be on my OnlyFans. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. On that, it's On that happy friend. note, thanks for joining us this week. No, but I am a coming lecturer. soon to Super Geeks. <laughs> yes, that's what she said. Super Geeks only fans. <laughs> oh my God. Get us oh, that. Someone would pay for it. The Planet Express. <laughs> Justin, pull the plug real. before it's too late. Justin, start making patches. Because that's how we'll get people to pay for it. Get me my snacks. Hey, hey, who, who's selling the Twinkies? <laughs> oh, no. We're not oh, selling no. Twinkies. We're selling cream-filled biscuits. By the way, anyone notice oh. how, much, how much better Justin's mic sounded this week? Yes. Oh, what would you do, Justin? 